6.04 p.m. Are there any adjustments that anyone sees that need to be made to the agenda? I would like a non-public at the end. Okay. Okay, anything um, else? At, at what point do we talk about um, trying to find the cuts? Uh, yeah, no, that actually wasn't what I was thinking about. I was just thinking about um, the trying to figure out the right words when we um, warn the school board meeting and we have Warrant. different articles that we want to add mm -hmm. to it. I don't see that in the agenda. We but should talk about it tonight when Tara gets here. Correct. Okay. But so I just want to make sure that that's in here somewhere. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so should we add 9.2 warrant and annual meeting? Yeah. I mean, we might be able to do some of it before. Like if, if it's things that aren't the budget side of things, we could do some before it carries here. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So we've added a non-public. We'll do that last thing after policy review. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And what was the reason for that? I'm sorry, Bruce. I Personnel. It. Personnel. Okay. Okay. Any anything else? All right. We'll move forward. Um, would anyone like to act as the timekeeper? Okay. Not a good thing. <laughs> okay. I can do it. So. All right. Um, so, anybody have recommendations about times allotted to different portions of the discussion? Do you know what time we first hear it? I don't know what time we. Uh, I'd say an hour. Okay. Just take things by, by, by year. Mm -hmm. you know, right. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So we won't allow specific times, but maybe if anything except the um, budget discussion goes over 15 minutes, you would let us know. Okay. Yeah, I'll just just keep so the we can. Yep. Mm -hmm. Same. Okay. All right. And that brings us to our first public comment. So. Would Pressure's like on. Comment? <laughs> you have a lot of people to represent. All right, thank you. All right, consent agenda. We have several um, minutes included in this packet from January 2nd, January 6th, 13th, and 16th. I make a motion to approve the minutes as a block. Okay. And we'll make a second that. Second it. That you spotted? Yeah. Oh. I saw them? Yeah, there's a Kerry Cole decay. It was probably not really. Oh, and where's that? <laughs> which which minutes? Uh, sorry. It's just having your name constantly on the panel. Probably the 13th. Is Front it the third? three under public comment. Uh, it's the fourth one down. Which so which which set of notes? Which what date? date? Sorry. Carry with a K. And the correct spelling is C A R R I. Okay. And the last name with a K. Okay. Yeah. And I know that there's one more correction on the notes from January 16th. I, uh, it's Jess Ryan, not Jen Ryan, for board members. So I made that correction. Okay. But I can um, send those amendments to um, Christy. Okay. Do we now amend your motion? Yes. yes. I amend my motion to accept the minutes yes. with the mentioned corrections. Okay. Accepted. Okay. Any discussion? All right. All in favor of approving the minutes of January 2nd, 6th, 13th, and 16th as amended, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. So 
All right. Do we have any board comments? I feel like we've been meeting a lot and talking a lot. And, um, I don't at this point. All right. Which brings us to reports to the board, our superintendent report. Uh, just a couple things. Uh, remind all of you that there's a policy committee meeting on Thursday night at the office uh, at 6 o'clock. Um, I'm not sure this will be the last one. I thought it was going to be, but there's quite a bit of work to do on the initial packet that I sent out to everybody. I think we have at least five to seven policies that need to be gone over still. One of them is the social media policy, which I think will require a lot of discussion. So if you're on that committee, please come. Um, I can't, we can't really do our work if there's only a couple of you. So um, the other is um, I have put out a notice in odds and ends about a committee uh, to hire a new special ed director since Deb is retiring. And uh, I now have 10 people already that uh, wish to serve. I haven't turned anything, anybody back. We have one community member, a couple of the principals, um, a bunch of the special educators. Um, if you've got a burning desire to be on that committee, uh, we'll probably have a meeting late next week to look over the applicants. Uh, there are about 10 applicants, 10 or 12. They're from all over the country. Several, a uh, couple, <coughs> Uh, that are currently working here in Vermont as in that role. Um, <coughs> so I think it's time for us to get going and not waiting any longer. Um, so um, we will probably post a meeting for later on in the week. And if any of you are interested in being on the committee and can make it sometime between 2 and 4.30 in the afternoon, uh, we'll probably try to stick to that. It, I don't know whether that's good for board members who are working outside of school or whatever, and, but a lot of the people that are working in the school want to be on the committee, so I'm trying to split that and balance that. Um, any, any thoughts? Anybody want to attend? David and Andra are already on it, so uh, I, don't, I don't know whether you do it. And um, be kind to Tara. These are really stressful times. Um, she, I'll say this, I'd say this if she were here. Uh, she's just been really putting in a lot of time. And uh, we've got two budgets done, and we've got two to go, this being one of them. Uh, she is a, a pretty tireless worker, but it's, uh, the pace is pretty, pretty difficult right now. So negotiations next week. We're going to meet after the whole SU board meets. We're going to take some time and um, prepare mm -hmm. for our meeting, our first meeting with the teachers, which will be on the 29th at 6 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And then the support staff will be, will be meeting with them on the 30th at 6 o'clock. Uh, I think that's all I have. Uh, Thank you. Um, should we skip down to the principal's report? I read it, but if there are highlights. We've been budgeting more than, more than a that's right. morning. <laughs> yeah. uh, you might see this in the paper on Thursday, mm -hmm. but uh, all 150 odd high school students went over to the Vermont Law School earlier today mm -hmm. to hear. Uh, the chief judge for the D.C. Circuit Court, um, who was also the 2018 Women's Bar Association Lawyer of the Year. Um, and uh, she spoke for a little over an hour and took questions, and uh, it was a really great event. That's awesome. Didn't make it into the principal's report. Okay. Didn't think ahead. <laughs> that is awesome. Years past, if a coordinated event such as that hadn't occurred, um, so it's neat when it happens and you have to recognize that. So cool. Thank you. Um, do we have our district's numbers for the um, 
literacy improvements? Um, K through our, your district? Yeah. Yes. No, I don't have that, but I have the SU wide number. Is okay. that possible to get our district? Just like we're going to be writing our letter to the community for the. Yeah, I gave Lisa the SU wide uh, one, um, and I corrected it. Okay. Later this afternoon, it's 16 percent of um, across the SU K through three. Okay. Um, and uh, uh, I don't know. You guys uh, tuned into what the improvement is? Uh, it's not been um, identified for a school yet. I mean, we have our own results, looking you know class to class, teacher to teacher, see who were just in a faculty meeting today where teachers were looking at their first and second grade data and working on um, reading lesson plans based on this data. So they've looked at their their own and school-wide data, but not in a percentage growth model and not in a comparison to other schools model. I think we're up across the board, and it's pretty unbelievable after four months. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it's and I think it just comes down to targeting one thing that we're trying to really, really boost. Uh, yeah, I mean, in the SU meeting, they had the um, presentation that was broken down by school, which is not labeled. So, you know. Yeah, we're trying not to have schools compete against each other. Right. Well, and, uh, but I know what you need, and uh, I'll see what I can get for you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and I know why you need it. Cause it well, really does show. It sounds like we might have it. I mean, if we have. Each well, Amy has told me that he, she's been communicating with the principals about it, no, not with me necessarily, okay. in each of the districts, and that's why I'm asking no, no, David and Andrew. Yeah, it's not an oversight. It's a purposeful strategy not to identify schools to have those data. Yeah, I know. I can understand that for the overall like uh, presentation, but then like I would like to know how our district is doing. I mean, the SU-wide improvement is great, but if it's not in our district, then you know, I want to know that. So, like, I, right. I, I, right. I think in each individual district, you can go and tell them their results, you know, while also having the SU-wide. Right, we don't need anonymized. The, the Royalton Elementary numbers to be pitted against the Bethel Elementary right. numbers, but if we knew what White River Union District, what our growth looked like, I think for our report, that mm -hmm. would be really helpful. Yeah. We can do it. Just because... I think people will ask us those questions. Did, did either of you get that from Amy? Um, I have like, I feel like we have like all the data. I, I could hand you like every child. I don't exactly want that. Yeah. Have, but um, I think we can easily put it into yeah. something. Yeah. I mean, okay. she has that number, so we just need we to ask We have the that. information. Yeah. So maybe just, yeah. I, mean, it's been I think it's, easy, yeah. it's important <laughs> to say yeah. that now we have the ability to track every single kid and know exactly okay. what yeah, each one of them are doing, which is something that's taken a while to get to and, and we talked about, but the, the data as it is now can pinpoint, you know, who's struggling and with what concept and uh, with the intent of trying to get that um, better, make that better. So and, I, and I would add, you know, um, I think Bethel and South Royalton have been the leaders in assessment. Um, in the assessment that we're using, we started it before some other school. But even to a greater extent, we're calibrated. We're scoring kids in the same way, so we can say we have apples to apples. Mm -hmm. And teachers are speaking the same language and all understanding it, um, which is a great thing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, and for what it's worth, then, we're looking, we have to, we're trying to get a letter from the board the public to get published and I think we have till this Friday so right. if we had some sort of measurement that we could throw into our document by Thursday then we could really finalize things so that so we're we have a budget before that right so, right know, if we don't have but budget, the town the clerks have requested letter. Friday at the latest all of the um, teachers are meeting on Friday uh, to talk about those results so I know we have them and mm -hmm. they're broken down. So it's just a question of getting them and I guess David and Andrew can get that done yeah. and get it to you. Yeah. Okay, okay. All right. Is that all for the principal's report? Okay. 
Um, I'm wondering if perhaps we should jump ahead to our policy review and potentially non-public before Tara gets here. I hate to throw the non-public into the middle of the meeting, but without the business manager, we're sort of but we can work on in our effort. We could also work on uh, the warrant annual meeting. There's there's a number of stuff in there okay. that um, won't require Tara. It'll, you know. Right. I mean, she draws up the warrant, right? Yes. You just have to tell her what you want in. From the from our notes from the 16th, we had a few ideas of things that needed to be in it, and there might be more. Okay. Um, and did we get a copy of last year's? No. No. Was that something we were supposed to? Yeah, anybody have a town report? Or clean it? I thought sure. we talked about that, but we might. Yeah. Okay. Just to make it easier. Yeah. It does. Yeah. Um, okay. So. Sh I mean, we can start to talk about it. I just think it's so, harder if Tara's not here to take her own notes for what to put into it. Mm -hmm. Well, um, yeah, well, I'm fine if we do non public session. Okay. So we have the policies to review. We read them the first time, um, I think, at our regular November meeting or December meeting. And it's all getting muddy in my brain now. Um, there are yeah, copies in here. Yeah, the three are uh, students 18 years old or older. These are these come right from the VSBA samples. Mm -hmm. We did add some things, and it, you'll see that in bold in that one. Mm -hmm. um, field trips uh, D30. The only thing that was really a change was they changed the order of two and three. That's mm -hmm. all because they felt it ought to be in the kind of order in which you would prepare a field trip for. Okay. And the last one is therapy dogs. And uh, this doesn't have a policy number yet, but it's, uh, they wanted us to uh, put in uh, the training and certification, uh, give you a little history about this, is that we've had some uh, requests to bring dogs to school, therapy dogs to school, and uh, in some case, there's been confrontations, and so we're trying to make sure that everybody passes the same standards. So we put in under training and, and uh, certification that um, they have this American Kennel Club Canine Good Citizen cert Certification and also the Vermont Therapy Dogs Registry. So um, those two standards are, have been added. Um, it's pretty straightforward. One thing that I was asked to do is send the therapy dogs policy to Dina for review. And I haven't done that yet, but I will. Um, these uh, have been pretty, they're pretty straightforward though. You know? So I don't know what your pleasure is. Questions or? I haven't had an opportunity to look at the Herald yet, but did Christy put the notification that we would be voting on these tonight in no, the newspaper? No. Yet, no. Okay. It'll, it'll be, it'll, she has to post all that before you okay. do that, but you ought to be pretty, if, if you want to suggest changes, you ought to do it so that we can. Right. But I, I will tell you also, this has gone through the policy committee, and I, I'm hoping that people are happy with them. Um, it says that the request form is attached to this policy, and I don't see Which the one? request form. The, the therapy dog one. The therapy. Okay. Yeah, well, that would be a procedure. Um, which one? Therapy dogs? Or mm -hmm. the yeah, we don't have one yet. So. Okay. so could we not reference that form if... It just feels weird to pass a policy that references a form that hasn't yet been created. I don't know. That Maybe out. that's just me. Or just, if you were going to have a request form attached to the policy, then let's get it attached to the policy before we approve it. Either or. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> What's our...
we have any um, requirements to warn parents that a therapy dog will be in the classroom? We have the allergic reaction kind of clause in that. I know I do know that there's a number of students that are allergic to dogs in the elementary school. I don't know about other ones, but do we have a... a I'm not aware of, of uh, some kind of notification. Um, principals might know more about that than I do, but... Uh, Sounds like a good idea because sometimes younger kids don't really know they have allergies and might rush up and handle a dog. There might be medications that other children would switch to if they knew that there was going to be the allergen in the classroom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, there might also be children that are fearful of dogs that you would also have to kind of... They're all good conversations. We've had dogs in this building now for maybe 10 years. Yeah. And I think we would treat dog allergies as we do all the other allergies. And if they're listed, we make a plan around them. We have kids that are allergic to many nuts, so we have to deal with that. Um, but we don't have anybody right now. Is that on your questionnaire for yeah, medical absolutely. form? I don't. Allergies. Al but, but it's so not. does it? Sometimes not allergies not. have a list of various foods and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Does it have pets or dogs, cats? I think it's, no, it's, it's just wide allergies. It's a, so allergies. it's up to the parent, parent to fill it in. Mm -hmm. Yep, and the nurses follow up with parents to be sure of it. And they follow up with teachers, so teachers know which allergies are in their yes. classroom. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. And they update. We just had to update it medical pertinent information for all our students. Okay. It's just that I, I think that most people when kids go to school don't think that there's going to be dogs or cats in the yeah. building. Maybe. So they might not think of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess that was my question too. Is it something that people identify on their sheet when they do it? I mean, not to get any specifics, but they were like, for me, I don't know if I would have thought of that. I would think more of like medications and, right. and food allergies, but not know. animal. For the sake of, I mean, more allergies seem to be cropping up all the time. It just might be a nice way to cover every base. Yeah, I think I, I'm kind of more worried about the, you know, uh, fear, mm -hmm. student fears and stuff like that. Like, if you let, let the parents know, then they can help prepare their kids going into school. If they're in. Is it possible to just think about at the beginning of the school year when you have the form that says, you know, exclude my child's picture? You know, the opt out from having your picture in publicity. Um, add that from time to time we have therapy dogs at school. Yeah, I think some sort of disclaimer. Yeah, through allergies, good. whether it's allergies or fear, yeah. you know, then parents could say, no, thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Well, I put that note down. So we'll see if we can work it into the policy somehow. I think it's really more of a procedure. Okay. Are we meaning it's a therapy dogs or can they have other kind of therapy animals? Therapy snakes? Let's therapy start. hedgehogs. Let's well, start. <laughs> well, they're certified. <laughs> uh, the Go ADA. Ostriches. Right. Well, I think we might we probably, probably develop something. Right? Okay. I know. Okay. 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 Certification or something. It's ADA horses and dogs, so we want to limit. That's a good. I don't think we're going to have horses. I, I'm <laughs> not you saying know. that we would want to have a therapy horse, but uh, we could have excluded cats in previous goals that I've because ADA specifies horses and dogs. Okay. As therapy animals. As okay. What's required? Those miniature horses. I mean, <laughs> okay. All right. I feel like we've, we're, we're getting off this policy. I'm getting but, distracted. Um, I'm thinking about miniature horses now. They're yeah. cute. Yeah, they're cute. All right. Um, okay. So our feedback is that White River Union District would like a procedure related to 
um, either allergies or students being afraid potentially of dogs. So, but the policy, I think, looks okay mm -hmm. other than referencing a documentary. Can't see. Okay. All right. Is that enough feedback for the policy committee? Uh, sure. Okay. So I think that brings us to our non-public. Um, so I apologize. Can I just ask yes. one quick question looking at this budget thing? Okay. Uh, on the very first thing, carry over from prior, prior years, there's nothing there. It seems to me with all the stuff that's been in the paper, there would be a plus or a negative. Is that because you haven't solved the problems yet? Or is that because there was... It, Exactly, no carryover or, or reduction. That's a great question. Um, I think we're hoping to absorb much of the current deficit in this current fiscal year. So we basically, I think we have three years or something in order to make up a deficit. So we want to see what it happened, like how much we're able to absorb into this year's budget by, you know, we had the spending freeze in place. So basically, this is a worthless piece. No, I mean, at the end of, so the audit from last year turned up that deficit. And um, so we've tried to reduce spending this year in order to try and make it so that next year's audit will have absorbed that deficit into what we budgeted for this year, if that makes sense. So if, if we have a corresponding surplus in what, what we're currently spending this year, then that would wipe out that deficit leaving us, you know, not needing to incorporate any in this current year. Does that make sense? <laughs> so the deficit was for FY19. We're currently in FY20. Are there extra? So my understanding is the, the FY whatever, 55,000 yep. is incorrect last year. Mm -hmm. That was um, correct number. Well, no, I mean. Right, but you're you're budgeting for these things a year in advance before you know what the result of the previous year. So it's you you don't think of like basically that was coming from FY18, where we had surplus money from FY18 that we incorporated into the FY20 budget. We now have a deficit of in FY19, and we're hoping that we're I mean not just hoping we're taking steps to try and make it so that that can be absorbed in the FY20 budget so we don't have to put it into the FY21 budget. If, it, if we haven't completely eliminated it by the time we get to the end of FY21, then we'll incorporate it into the FY22 budget to make up. That makes sense. <laughs> oh, okay, just look, the numbers in the newspaper are $455,000. You're going to somehow magically come up with $455,000 in this year, so that it's just kind of a wash? I mean, do, you, do you think that's a realistic thing? I mean, have you, have I think the numbers in the newspaper was referring to the first, well, the first draft of the audit that hadn't quite been completed yet. So, so is the audit those, now? it's completed now, and there's been corrections to those original numbers. So they're so smaller than small. what was reported in the paper. Still, but it's still a draft yeah. audit. Yeah. We don't. It's not completely Something conclusive. Something like hundred thousand dollars smaller. So we're talking three hundred fifty thousand dollars. If you're going to try to, and I'm sorry if I'm a little slow. No. If you're going to try to figure out how to cut to, from whenever you stopped spending money to come up with, say, three hundred fifty thousand dollars, so this would be a wash going into next year. And when is it? When do you? determine whether or not you've made that goal and when does the actual number go into the budget? I think we'll find out at the end of this year once we get, you know, Because you're going to be voting, finalized. you're going to be voting on a budget that has an unknown in it. Well, you don't have to make up to the say, deficit. I think we're going to be able to say where we stand when it's time to vote so that the public knows that. Um, and we may not have all the information, but everybody's been very, very conservative, really since November. 
in trying to make sure that we, and the principals and I identified about $250,000 that we acted on uh, that we weren't going to spend and have kind of put the clamps on that beginning in November when we went back through the budget. Do we have to spend this? Do we have to do that? And we came up with about 250000 there. I think it'll be better than that, but I can't tell you right now. We should, I think, doing our due diligence, we ought to have a pretty good projection when we talk to the voters about what, what it's looking like right now. Uh, so, so. And I, the other thing I would say, slow, like... I'm a little slow on this. So when you say conservative, you mean if you thought the budget was going to be $1,000, you might have made it 1100 or whatever? Well, let me, let me give you some you're trying to practical examples. Um, let's talk about uh, the money that would have been used for literacy supplies. We spent $600,000, not in out of local budgets, for literacy materials. And so we don't have to use that money in the local budget because it's already been purchased for all the classrooms pre-K through five this year. Um, throughout the whole SU, but uh, basically, what I'm saying is we tried to identify things that we may not need because of other things we're doing, a field trip, grant funds, uh, things like that that we could use instead of local budget money and we could save that. So that's about as practical as I can get you without giving you a list of exactly what they were. But we spent uh, two days in a room trying to figure out, you know, what we could do without, uh, without anybody really being in big need, you know, put off spending on this. And we are still spending, but we're not spending some of the money we identified that we could conserve. And I think, you know, that was $250,000 with that exercise, and that happened, what, a month ago? Probably, right before Christmas. I thought it was before that, but yeah. Well, and even just last week at our last special board meeting, we were going line item by line item and looking at certain things where there might have been a certain larger amount of money allocated to a certain uh, expense section that we realized didn't have to be that high because that might have been appropriated towards um, additional investments due to the merger of the school. So now that line item could be smaller. So as we tweaked it, it even put us in a better position by the end of that meeting. So we've really been looking at every single thing and not trying to take things away from the students, but trying to really look at what do we really need, what was spent last year, what do we need for next year, um, and what, what does that number look like. And some of those numbers were a bit higher than what they needed to be. So it was nice to look at that line by line. Well, what I'm concerned about is we aren't kicking the can down the road, i.e. not the springs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, we're very things that is, if you kick that can too far, mm -hmm. it's going to be an emergency, and then you're going to be borrowing money at the worst mm -hmm. possible time. Mm -hmm. And I think it's better to recognize those things up front than to just kick this can down and we'll band-aid the furnace again. And, and uh, in any case. Yeah. Yeah, I think one thing that we've talked about, and it's not something we can decide here, it would need to it would need to go to the annual meeting is doing something similar to what Rochester has done by moving their school meeting to May um, and that's when we'd have more solid numbers on everything um, it's a huge shift in thinking um, but at the same time we wait for numbers from the state um, until after our budgets go to the town we wait for numbers from the auditor seemingly later and later. Um, so it, it is frustrating not to have all of those columns filled out in ways that are that are getting, satisfying. Are we getting numbers from the auditors sooner each year as opposed to even after? We are getting them sooner this year. Than we're ahead of where we were last well, year. We've but have been it's, kind of disappointed at the pace uh, of what we've gotten back, when we've gotten back. Uh, we've We've been talking to them. I think Tara talks to them every other day, uh, basically to get what she needs because we, they're 
there are things that <coughs> voters want to know, and we, we need to provide uh, and be transparent about it. Uh, we started earlier this year than we have in other years with them. Uh, and, uh, you know. So, so it's not really the auditor's issue, the auditor's is waiting for you to give them the information? It's not only that, there's, there's, and I, God, every time I say this, I feel like I'm scapegoating somebody else, but uh, we filed a thing called a SEER report about a month and a half ago, that's special ed education for the fourth quarter of the year, they give us money that, to make up for what we've spent. And uh, we still haven't seen that. Uh, we, and we, depending on how it is and how it comes in, we, we're using our best guess in this budget, but we haven't seen the real numbers. We think we know what they are, but they haven't responded to us. They said they'd do it right after the first of the year, and here it is, the 21st, and we still haven't seen it. Um, so you mean the fourth quarter of the fiscal year, which closed last year, June 30th? Which would help us if it's a little higher than we expect with deficit numbers. And uh, this is, these are numbers from the state. Correct. Yes. Correct. It's it's payment back to us from the state. So as, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, do you, have you communicated with our senators and representatives, and have, have they been no. set in front of you? And why this isn't happening? Uh, not our senators and representatives, but um, the Secretary of Education. Uh, well, maybe he's the who boss. Made, who made the laws <laughs> ought to be able to know that they're not being... Dealt. I think they're very well aware that, that uh, they missed all kinds of deadlines in the last year. Well, um, I, I think they should come to the meeting here instead of coming to town meeting. Never us all the stuff that we don't care about. Maybe now is the time to have them here. They do have money to go. Thank you. Thank you. I think it's a great idea. <coughs> I'm done. Okay. All right. Anybody else? All right. So we'll enter non public session for personnel. And reconvene. Yeah, um, it'll be here, but then, um, yeah, so just shut it off and, just wait. Shut it off and wait, please. Just a non Thank you. Session that a while ago. <laughs> Exit is at 7 13. We had majors on at the other room. Just kidding, we didn't. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, should we start to talk about the warning? Um, just because. Uh, I mean, I am all in favor of postponing it until Tara gets here, but in light of the fact that Tara is not here still, um, then we should move on to the warrant. So. Would that have been something that Tara would have sent us? Um, last year it came <coughs> from Ginger. I think it was Ginger. Was it at the meeting? Oh, what are we talking about? Oh, oh just getting a, an example oh. of last year's warning. Yeah, I've got it. As a template. I've got it on um, from the town report. Okay. Oh, okay. Open. Okay. There it is. Mine wouldn't open. <laughs> uh, I can email I was it. Try it so wouldn't that be, if you emailed you. it to That's somebody great. here, could we get a print copy? We could have done sure it before could. we went into executive Send session. Send it to but Andrew or Rowan. I'll, I'll send it for you. Okay. Right, I'll send it to everybody. Thank you. Just the warrant, or are we going to have to scroll down? Uh, you'll have to scroll down. Um, what page is it on the? I will tell you after I send it. So were there things, specific things that you were thinking of adding to the warrant? That, uh, yeah, from the notes, we had a couple, there was a couple things that um, Bruce had mentioned. 
that might be new. <laughs> That's why I couldn't open it. <laughs> oh, language for the proposal to change Actually, the annual meeting date to May. Just, yeah, that has to be a conversation with your community about doing that for <coughs> next year. Mm hmm do we think it's worth raising that question i mean i've brought it up a couple times the meeting that we brought it up at that was in royalton people were pretty opposed well um, if there was a few sentences to explain why we're thinking of it okay at least it's it would it's be, a on, bigger it'd be forum. on the floor for a discussion mm -hmm. okay sorry did i just kick you okay. yeah sorry no um Right, so we could put it on the floor so that we have a broader audience. Mm -hmm. <coughs> maybe it may be worth discussing it too, just to maybe bring awareness to some of those issues too, and you know, beyond just inviting legislators to like this meeting, but also to have all the people in the community aware of it. That, mm -hmm. Because I mean, that's one of my issues with moving it later, is that. It's our part is just one part of three things, and the other two parts are the ones that are consistently late. But you know, so but we're on time because we have to be on time. And then the other two parts, the audit and the state, you know, where's the repercussions for them for being late? And I think you know the worst offender is probably the state. You know, last year the audit wasn't great. This year it's still going slow. But you know, the only way we could you know, we can change, but in the end, you know, even if we move later, is the people at the state now going to say, oh, well, now we've got even more time and we can be even later than we were before. Uh, whereas, you know, I wasn't here for it, but I know from people that I work with, like a guy that I worked with, his mom was the uh, business manager for the Northfield schools for all of her career, and they always had the info from the state in November. And, you know, mm -hmm. if it was, if they didn't get it by Thanksgiving, then the state was late. Now it's like, you know, now we aren't even getting info from the state by town meeting day. Mm -hmm. um, so there needs to be other movement just than our own, uh, or else we're just going to end up right back in the spot again. And I think, but I think having a discussion at a larger forum where there's lots of people there to give their insight and thought, but also to be able to, when they talk to their legislators, you know, the, the same people that we're all voting for that, you know, that they can talk about it too and you know, that hear it from multiple voices rather than just one. Right. I do think um, not just the inf getting information though, it'd also be useful having it, the budget set later for things like if you have repairs that you find out about, you can budget them for next year and it's only like three months away instead of six months away. You know, just the, the most important thing is if you're going to move it, need to move it so that if the right. vote goes down, you've still got time to get a reconsideration uh, before uh, June 30th. So picking a date that's maybe at least six, six, six weeks? Six weeks. Or, yeah, wow. you figure that, that you've got to have a, a warn, you've got to have it worn for a month. Uh, and so, and that's where we were getting with Rochester and Stockbridge. They were, they were going so deep that we weren't going to be able to turn it around if the budget went down. So you want to stay a healthy uh, amount of distance between that June 30th drop dead date. So late April or early May? Really it needs to be before May because you need 30 days to warn the meeting and then you need to give rescission people 30 days to yeah. petition and you want to allow yourselves at least a week in between those two to come up with the set to ask the administration to come up with a new budget to warn mm -hmm. if there's a rescission petition like there was last year. But then you have to work around April break, and then are we actually giving ourselves any any time versus the yeah. uproar or yeah. the concern? Maybe give yourselves five or six more weeks. Yeah. I wonder if like the with the first Tuesday in April. Be another month anyway. It gives us another month to get things together. Then you'd have two votes before June if needed. So, do we want to just have a discussion about this at town meeting, or would you actually want to have something on the proposal? 
I, some I sort think of we need to have a discussion with Wood. Mm -hmm. all of you. Well, the only time we can vote is at town meeting. We can no, call we another can. vote, a, spe yeah. a, a special yeah, vote. Yeah, a special okay. meeting at any, I mean, you can do that. Is there any financial time. impacts of us separating the two? Yeah, um, I think that mailings have a tendency to cost, what, about $3,000 each time you do a mailing across the two communities. That's the number I remember from the original vote. To merge. And compared to the cost that we, I mean, obviously the cost is something when we add it to the town report, we're, we're taking on whatever pages are being covered. <coughs> I'd be curious what the cost for adding it in the town report versus having our own mailing, how that mm -hmm. might compare. Mm -hmm. I think, I think it would be difficult for you if you don't think this out ahead of time. I think you ought to go to them with a <laughs> suggestion because if you don't have that, it'll, it'll be all over the place. I think they look to you for leadership, and I think you ought to try to give them, we're, we're thinking, we've talked a lot about it, and here's what we've come up with, and here's why, and uh, they still you still might not get it done, but at least, you know, I think that's what they're looking for is some kind of uh, intelligent discussion mm -hmm. based on, you know, uh, conversations that have happened before. So. Okay. Well, for the warrant deadline, we, we'd have maybe just a, a couple sentences talking about what we intend to do, and then we'd have a month or so to get our, pull our information together to have something to present, because I can't imagine we're going to get all those resources, you know, all those thoughts together in five mm -hmm. or six days, we could at least plant the seed and imply that we'll have deeper discussion and more information to share at the time of the meeting, or maybe somehow get it to, to voters. So do you want the language to say, we'll bring a proposal to you at the meeting? For discussion. For discussion. Mm -hmm. Or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, Curious. There were some email discussions that Andrew and I and Lisa were yeah. having with the, the two town clerks about. Still a little confused about them. About chapter zero one one union schools and school districts and joint schools sub chapter zero zero four. Uh, basically, there's language in here saying that um, in any member district that elects its representative directors to the union school district board um, by Australian ba ballot, it, it basically um, is saying that the clerk of the Union School District would be the one to in charge of collecting the ballots and having them counted. And so which is new, it would be a new act, action compared to what's been done previous years. Uh -huh. um, and I can forward that language to everybody, but um, it, I'm not sure how, I think we need to figure out how we're going to handle that. Is it with new this. or is it just discovered? Just I discovered. Th We've been doing it wrong. And it's the clerk or her designee, right? Um, yeah, let me see. Um, so in previous years, you designated the um, previous, the other clerks. But part of it is that they're supposed to be counted in a central location. So theoretically, we're supposed to be taking the ballots from each town, going to a central location, and doing the count there. So not counting them in separate towns. And then I think both of us are dissatisfied. <laughs> What do you mean? Oh, so not at the, not on the floor. Not on the floor. No, this is no. the Australian ballot. So right. And so couldn't they just be brought to the central office? Well, I don't think that that's necessary. I think what you do is just have one of the towns drive to the other town and do the count in, in that town. So, you okay. know, like, if you say, you flip a coin between Royalton and Bethel this year and... You, you designate one of the, um, what are they called, the Board of Civil Board, Authority? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, designate one or two people who would be in charge of um, the school ballots. And so the town that's not the central location would pack up their ballots and drive to the other town, do the count there, 
and then yeah, it's something fine. screams not okay with the driving to somebody else's town to count those ballots. I'm not a well, oh, yeah, like authority. making sure it's got to be in somebody's possession that mm -hmm. right. I mean, they see that a yeah. ballot's it's not going to get lost or misplaced. Um, that's where the language is is mm -hmm. kind of. Um, so did the town clerks identify the rules of board civil authority that have prevented such from occurring? Um, no, I mean, we didn't realize that the board, the ballots had to be counted, in, or were supposed to, by law, be counted in a central location. Mm, okay. So, um, commingled? It does say commingled, but I don't know that that means that you have to, you know, count them, like shuffle them and count them, or if you can just do them in a... I'm picturing shoeboxes and we're pulling it. They, pulling yeah, into they like have a to bucket. mix them. They can't keep track of how many people voted for it in Bethel and who okay. voted in South Okay. Um, so if we want to change that, we need to do something mm -hmm. to amend the Article of Agreement or whatever. So what do the clerks propose? I mean, I feel like this is much more their... Right, <laughs> than mine. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, last year when when the rescission went on and everything, or or the the vote to rescind potentially, I, you know, called the the Secretary of State and followed up and did that work because I felt like that was something that I was tasked with. Um, but I feel like the Board of Civil Authority and the town clerks are the people who typically handle Australian ballots. And I can read this, and yes, the words all make sense. But I feel like there's some nuance here that I might be missing, because it does feel bizarre to me that someone would expect that your votes all get packed up in somebody's minivan and driven to the next town. Well, I mean, it says the Board of Civil Authority right. um, and the transporting of ballots. So they are in charge of transporting ballots. Right. But still, I, what, something just feels odd to me about the whole thing. What part of this do you thing. have any involvement in? I don't think you have any. Well, it says well, it that says, the board clerk yeah. is in it says, charge. Transportation of ballots in its district to a central point designated by the board of school directors. The ballots shall be commingled. Counting of ballots by representatives of the board of civil authority of the member town shall be supervised by the union district clerk or his or her designee. So. We are in charge of picking where they're counted, and Royalton the clerk is in charge of supervising or designating someone to supervise. Mm -hmm. And if we want to change that, we need to actually <coughs> do something that's going to super, supersede this. Um, and one of the clerks did point out that, you know, particularly this year when they have national elections, state elections, and local elections all to count, they can't, the clerks themselves can't be like, multitasking and doing multiple counts at the same time so it goes in order you know you count the national or I don't know what the order is but you know you're counting one thing at a time and so whereas this would be somebody else supervising it so we could do this count well the other counts going on and it wouldn't have to be you know waiting in line if, if the clerks are in charge okay. then it has to wait in line until they're done with whatever other counts whereas That's why they were very careful about where we placed our meeting because they knew they had other responsibilities. Right. Um, that was the, the day of, right. That's why we changed the day of the meeting. Mm -hmm. But if but we if we leave it the way it is and transport, you know, the civil authority transports, we basically just, the clerk designates the civil authority members to be one of the civil authority members to supervise it, and we designate one of the other towns, then our count can go on while the other counts are going on. And it can mm -hmm. multitask. So I, I think it's fine the way it works. That's what I'm trying to. Right. 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 Using, so the school would use a paper ballot as opposed to using a machine. Yeah, we use done, paper ballot. If it's done with a machine, then you've got uh -huh. you, you, you have some way of separating that. You can't lug the machine down. I guess you can lug the software or something, but that gets to be. Yeah, no, it's still But neither of our towns have machines yet, right? Where does it, I, I'm looking at, what's that? Bethel has a machine. Not for the local ballots, I don't think. Is it? I know all the state and federal things go through a machine. Okay. Right. 
Yeah, I think the state and the federal ones probably do, but I don't think the local does. Mm -hmm. I could is, be wrong. Where is the, where is this piece about transporting them to a central location and stuff? I mean the uh, sixteen seven oh six W. Oh W. <laughs> you work on the Vermont statutes, polling places, transportation, counting of ballots. I don't know, I'm looking at an email that Carmen had sent, uh, forwarded. Start getting signatures. <laughs> yeah. Landfill is a good place to go. So I mean, the Florida Civil Authority has not waived anyone at all. Is that correct? Well, I mean, we've had some emails about it um, with the clerks, and they haven't had specific oh, suggestions. Basically, I, I proposed what I just outlined, and they said that that would be fine. Is it, well, isn't this related to bond issues? Because it says yeah. bond issues under 24 VSA are to be determined by Australian ballot voting machine in each regular polling place in the district. So, and then it says the Board of Civil Authority of each town within the union district shall be responsible for determining the element. I mean, it sounds like it's about bond voting. It's not about. Let me go look. School board. Should we reach out to neighboring union districts and just find out what they do? Similar, I mean, Hartford. I don't think that they bring all their. I could find out that sort of thing pretty quickly. I mean, I'm not sure what the OSSD does if they move all their ballots from Brookfield and Braintree to Randolph. Um, There's, there, I mean, you can you can contact somebody at the state, like um, the Secretary of State again. Well, Emily Simmons, who's one of the people that work with the Secretary Donna Russo Savage. Yeah, I, know I, mean, I can see it. I can see it for bond voting, so mm -hmm. that then there's not finger pointing between communities and stuff. True. But I don't think because if you go to 706K about the election of school board members, there's mm -hmm. no mention of commingling of ballots and stuff. I think it's just related to bond votes. We're not we're not voting on any bonds, right? Maybe, okay. but I mean, it doesn't talk about how the ballots are to be counted anywhere in here. It just says that it's about the nomination process, but not. Um, and then the length of term. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So does. And the, the title for the 706W is polling places, transportation, and counting of ballots, not. Yeah, but then it starts off saying bond issues under. True. Mm -hmm. But when, when Carmen but, sent me this email, she had another below the 706W, she said, some districts have opted not to do this process. Some districts have decided to count the ballots at each polling place and then transmit the totals to the school district clerk to total up and release the results. This has been done by amending the Articles of Agreement. Your Articles of Agreement do not lay out a different procedure, so you would default to the above statute. So that could be an article of agreement if we find some common okay, language where we could. So that was from the Vermont Secretary of State, by the way. Oh, it was. Yeah. Okay. For that the she election just administrator and from the Vermont Office of the Secretary Secretary of State. Right, right, right. So they're the ones who provided this 706W for counting of mm -hmm. ballots. So I'm happy to reach out to Donna Russo Savage because this. It doesn't, I mean, it just doesn't seem, it seems pretty I'll, foreign. I'll, I'll forward you the email from Carmen that she got from the um, Secretary of State. Is that, she just copied and pasted the something. Oh, from, from J.P. Isabel. Yeah. So I'll, get, I'll send it to you as well if you want. Okay. So you're going to follow up with Mrs. Russo, but her first name is something? Savage, her Donna Russo Savage, and she works at the Agency of Education. I believe she's an attorney. So we um, do we feel like we know what we want to add to the? Well, if we want to change it for next year to do something like this, like count in each town and then transmit, then we need to add it to the one, like right. you know, article shall the voters approve changing this or something like that. Right, but and that's where we this need to get year. the lawyers. But this year, I think we're stuck doing a centralized location. We're stuck doing it however we're going to be told to do it, but we could add 
an article agreement for the for the following year so that it's a little simpler. Okay. Is there anything else we need to add to the warning? I don't think so. I think we have just that, that one, the the language around bringing a proposal. Um, a, to, a proposal to consider moving the um, meeting to later in the year. And I think that that should go earlier in the evening or earlier so that we have that discussion about the reasons why we might want sure. to do that. Um. And I sent you all the language from the Secretary of State, what statute pertains to that, and what language would have to be in the warning. Oh, you did? Just now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank cool. you. You're welcome. Okay. Um. I wonder if Tara is still on her way. Um, I did get an email saying that she was. If, if we're ready, the, the principals uh, did additional work today to prioritize the list and tally okay. Okay. the non-personnel cuts to add those to the 779 we presented two weeks ago. Okay. You want to do that? Yeah. yeah. So we'll jump into budget discussion. So what are we uh, We'll see where the current administration thinking is about personnel cuts. But do we, before we do that, I think we should just get an overall overview of where we're at and how much we're looking to trim. Did we end up with a total tally for non-personnel cuts? You meant a tally of non-personnel Well, we did tally. In the last meeting, we provided the tally of non-personnel cuts, and that went into draft three. Right. But there was a lot of stuff that was identified at that meeting that yeah. was... Yes. So, you know, I, I don't think that total it reflects what the actual total was. So, all right. Anyway. So, so, one of the questions we have for Tara will be did she get all the things from the last Thursday meeting, Thursday's meeting in or not? Okay. Uh, and I guess one way we could test that is we look at the phone budget and see if the phone budget says 23000 or 25000 Because that was one of the changes. I thought it was going to like 10,000. Uh, services uh, is down to $20,000 proposed. So it looks like she went through the list from last Thursday night. And my best guess is that those are in. It doesn't mean that they all made it. But. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the, on the first 110, um, I mean, 1100, the regular ad instruction first page, six, 568 and 569, that was the tech center tuition thing where it was being double counted. And as far as I can tell, that's still double counted. Right. So we'll need explanation from her on that. Because I thought in her email she said that that didn't need to be. Is that on, on page one place. you're yeah. looking at? The and where's the phone? Seven. What page is the phone on? The pages are numbered, so. There hey, Tara. Hey, Tara. Mm -hmm. There she is. The phone is the fourth line down on page 12. Okay. Chair legs. Oh, never mind. <laughs> what we, we tried to do was to have the discussion amongst ourselves to make it easier uh, tonight, if that's where we end up, uh, to see where our next round of cuts would be, as opposed to spending a lot of time discussing our priorities with everybody. Mm -hmm.
pull that up while Tara plugs in and uh, we get an update when Tara plugs in. Does that sound good? Yeah. We do that. We may answer some of your questions in the process. Oh, okay. I was just trying All to right. figure out. Because I'm like, wait a minute. I, okay. I had a different number than that. So Make that easy. That doesn't impact the expenditure report. It's only on the tax sheet. Do you need this? No, I got a copy thing. So it's only on the tax sheet. But yep. the tax sheet. Mm -hmm. So those oh, are, I think this is doing a wrong thing. Because it looks like it's adding the Can you? expenditures. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, isn't there a place where you can do the whole page or? classrooms in South Royalton, the asbestos that was in there as well. Uh, so once you do all the non-personnel stuff, uh, professional development, then we feel like there are some wise cuts of personnel that put us on a more sustainable financial footing uh, that really, you know, are probably not enough to get us to where we need to be. So we ask for them to be included in so we can start doing the harder work. So that would be the uh, point two for the work-based learning at South Rothen, although uh, that may have been already taken out in draft two. The custodial, I think, was also taken out in draft two, so those may not be <coughs> additional. Mm -hmm. uh, the big one is reducing uh, one elementary teacher from each campus for a total savings of 118,000. Um, in listening to the feedback last Thursday, uh, I've, I've heard multiple people talk about not wanting to get rid of the French program uh, or the cost of getting rid of programs at the high school that we have students enrolled in right now. So I, in looking closer at this, found it hard to justify why we would be bringing in a new program that has no students enrolled while we're cutting staff um, that have students enrolled. So I added the outdoor program coordinator half-time position from the high school to this list. And that's somebody that we don't have anybody. We don't have anybody doing that currently. Yes, we do. We have somebody full-time right now who's They're working in the middle working school in the middle and school. developing the high school program. Uh, but we don't have okay. any students at the high school enrolled at this time. Okay. Uh, and we're not sure what that looks like or would look like next year. Before you go on, can you remind the board about what the class enrollment for the two elementary teacher cuts would be, how, how that would change? Currently, what are they, and currently, what would they be? So uh, maybe that's not, I, I would prefer to approach it in a different way. So there's the education and quality standards, which talk about a lot of things in schools, and one of them is class size. And I believe it talks about the recommended class size for a K-2 population 
five population, and um, it's around 17-ish is what you're shooting for for a class size. That's, there's, there's a window. Um, so I think in all my initial conversations with David, also with his staff, about looking at next year, we were trying to say what would be the best configurations so that we have substantial size classes that are within this window and not you know, 10 or 12 in a classroom. So what are they right now? Um, I think they range. Yeah, there are some 12 and 15 is about as high as they go in the South Royalton campus. We have a couple of classes of eight or nine, and that's too small. And and what would they be with the two cousins? How many would they be? Yeah, how would that change? I think we'd be around 17. Yeah, yeah. And really that would be about as high as it would get with the reduction of one teacher. And that's anticipating the pre or the kindergarten moving up to first grade? That's that, anticipating that. Okay. We aren't anticipating uh, preschool screening is April 15th. So we'll know more of that mm -hmm. level. Okay. With the reduction of a, a elementary teacher in both on both campuses, would that um, provide more room for more preschool? Uh, you're going to be. Should. It might make a room available on both campuses for the expansion of pre-K if it was needed? Mm -hmm. okay. The school quality standards say for, mm -hmm. if you take an average of K-3 classes, the average should be fewer than 20 per teacher in grades K through 3. And in grades 4 through 12, on average, there should be fewer than 25. But we're not approaching 25. No, yeah. <laughs> and we're not recommending it. No, no, no. no. Thank you. So we're, we're looking for a, um, we told our folks we're looking for a K-2 minimum of 15 with a max of 20 and a 4-5 minimum of 18 with a max of 23. And there's no way we're going to be perfect in that. Right. Right. Those are averages. Okay. Thank you. There's more to tier one, right? So there's more to tier one. We came to a, a total of a half a million dollars for the tier one cuts. Uh, those include some additional money out of the telephone budget. Uh, we went and looked at last year's actuals today, and they came to about sixteen thousand uh, dollars. So even though we're now budgeted at twenty, we could probably cut another three thousand dollars and be safe. Uh, we are under-enrolled in social studies, so we would take a third of a position from the high school, and I guess that's all if we added to tier one. Okay. Can you? So the total personnel impact uh, from the classroom would be three FTEs, uh, and, and half of an FTE would be custodial in that tier. Okay. How, what's the impact to the, the programs? How many different classes are we cutting, you say outdoor program, there's one. Social studies, are we cutting some? So for the outdoor program, it, there there are no classes at the high school right now, so no students there would be affected. Uh, I'm not sure that, I know there's some eighth graders who'll be coming into ninth grade. I'm not sure that there's room in ninth graders schedule to take an elective like this, yep. uh, at least not as it's envisioned. Uh, We've got a bunch of ninth graders who are squeezing in one more class than the schedule actually allows from the take right now. So, um, you know, we, we're in the middle of scheduling talks too, so it's not clear exactly how that will play out. Is the social studies cut one class or two? It would be two classes. Uh, and right now we have there are electives. Uh, we have one elective that has two kids in it uh, that wouldn't be offered next year, and uh, because we had staff. Uh, we took one freshman class of 15 kids and we divided into a class of eight and a class of seven. Uh, wow. So really, we, we could have kept that class of 15 and that would have been a good to average size. Uh, so we're, we're really not impacting social studies very much. By doing that. And that class with only two students, um, that's not an AP class or, okay. 
Um, for the outdoor program coordinator, I mean, that was something that we had in our mm -hmm. um, articles <coughs> of agreement that never got fully implemented, and now we're going to cut it before we fully implement it. Or could we say um, that we're putting it on hold and hopefully implementing it for the following year should funds arise? Because it sounds like you're building it in the middle school, and now there's somebody building it in the middle school, and with one more year of building, it could be even more prepared with more students having been exposed to it in the middle school than being in the high school. My concern is that if, if we, you know, for every position we keep, we continue to run on the course of being under-enrolled and not being sustainable. That, that, that position is really a, it's a wish item that if we build it, they will come. Uh, we, I don't, I don't have any data that suggests that's actually going to happen, that more kids from Randolph are going to move to Bethel or, or South Royalton to enroll in this program. But we haven't been promoting it, so how, if they don't know that it exists, how do we know, how can we measure response? And I don't think it was just for tuition students, you know, I think it was an opportunity for our students as well. And, and it could be an opportunity for our students. What we don't know right now is whether or not it would be enrolled. Um, Hypothetically speaking, um, we, we could take it out of the budget right now, and maybe I'm wrong about this, you guys can correct me, but we, we could move forward not planning to have it. We're not funding it, and we could see if students sign up for it. I mean, we have some plans for what it might look like. See if students sign up for it, and we could shuffle staff uh, pay around to see if we can and find a way to build it if it's justified by student enrollment. I think that's a good, mm -hmm. I, I'd like to see it's a good plan. that. It could be a conflict piece, though. I mean, we issue staff contracts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, so we'd have to make sure that if we're going to move staff around, we don't issue those contracts until we figure it out. But our, our hope is to have our schedule in place <laughs> and have students sign up for classes in early March. So we, we should know what our numbers are before the contracts have to be issued. Well, and the contract correct me if I'm wrong, does it designate which building you're in, correct? Correct. No. So it would be a .5 outdoor program coordinator. School district. Right. So they're in our district. I'm not following. Well, the only reason that this made the list was because it was a little easier to do than... Right. Than, uh, it may not be the right thing to do, but it's a little easier to do when you're talking about some of the other ones down the list. So I'm, maybe the it's, a I guess reduction, it's a reduction of force, though. Somebody's in a 1.0 position. Okay. Coordinating for both the middle school and the high right. school, but there's right. no program the at the high school. Right. Okay. But they're not actually teaching the program, <laughs> okay. right? Because as a coordinator, right. you're not teaching the program necessarily. Correct. It's the planning and facilitation of a teacher or teachers implementing. So, so in a sense, I'm wondering if we've already paid for the planning to happen this year, and right. there would the need to be professional be. development for That's implementation. For, and, and, and you know, part of my suggestion that we add this here comes from last year. We put this in the budget, not knowing anything about how the program would be received. We built it into our program of studies. Uh, we had an outdoor leadership skills class that was offered to the high schoolers, and we talked. I spent two minutes talking to every single high school student uh, mm -hmm. in a round robin presentation in the, the thing, and you know, we had one student who expressed an interest in taking that class. Um, so, it, I, I, you know, the, the challenge is, is it may be a great program. What we're seeing right now on the high school campus is a lot of students saying, well, we want to take band and course and we have to take this PE class and we don't have room in our schedule just to get the requirements in, much less deciding on that next mm -hmm. class. Okay. Uh, so it, it doesn't have to go there, it can come out. But. Okay. Well, I just think about the ECO program and how we're talking about such success with the ECO program and how that's morphing into a middle school scale or approach to being outside and understanding the natural world and and I really want to see a farm-to-school program evolve from all of this as well. 
and I see that as an opportunity for outdoor education and learning. And I, I'd hate to see that momentum get lost and fade away when that was kind of our initial vision of getting the youth, getting the youngest growing and getting used to that exposure so that over the course of two or three years, it's, it gets implemented in the higher grades. So personally, I'd love to see a placeholder at least gauge interest. Um, I, like I said, I, I want to see, I want to see both school campuses producing some food for the cafeteria. I, I, I want that phase of the outdoor to be part of it too. And I'm hoping that that's kind of a, an ultimate down the road vision as well. It used to exist. Um, and it exists pretty strongly in a lot of school campuses. And I think we've got, you know, I'd like to see things moving in that direction personally as a parent and a community member. <coughs> and that's kind of what I was thinking of when I saw this. And as we were selling it, as we were, you know, before the merger of the school, we were talking about all this outdoor opportunities for learning. And um, I don't want that to get knocked out and not exist as a potential. Mm -hmm. That's just me. You guys want to go to tier two? Um, can we <laughs> can we answer some well, like I think we need to do a little now that we have Tara here get some questions answered about thank you. other things before we you know I don't want to go through a big long list of cuts before we have an idea of how much we need to cut. Sure, we right. I totally agree because yeah. people uneasy. Yeah. And yeah. Mm -hmm. we don't need to. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> so, um, so oh, that's enough like, too. Uh -huh. yeah. I thought the tech center tuition on behalf was supposed to come out, right? I took out Yeah, your email said that you took out. I the, removed a two oh one. 1100 the tech center tuition on behalf of, not the 568. The 568 has to be there, and 569 has to be there per the state's requirements. You have to show both the expense and the revenue per statute. Right, but on the, this is just the expense portion, and we have 568 tech center tuition on behalf of 167. And so I understand that it needs to be on the revenue and on the expense, but it looks like it's on the expense twice still, unless I'm reading things wrong. So where's the other place that it's on the expense side? Well, it's on side. 568 and 569. There's tuition-other, which includes tech center tuition okay. line, or had include, included tech center tuition. Um, and then there's the tech center tuition on behalf, um, which is offset by the revenue that we get. Okay. But, you know, basically, I think we need to figure out how that's supposed to be working or make sure that that's right. Basically. So 569 should be the actual tuition you're paying to your tech centers. Right. So it's not the same. Okay. Right. No, so I understand 568 that. 568 is the expenditure to match the revenue, object code 568. Object code 569 is the actual what you're writing for tuition payments to RTCC and Hartford Area Korean Technology Center. So we get, how much are we reimbursed? Like is it, it's not 100% or 90% or something like that? There's a calculation that we have, we have to submit a worksheet per semester to be reimbursed. So that. is the tech center tuition like over and above what? Yeah, looks like we're paying 300 So in your education spending grant, the state pays tech center tuition on your behalf, 87%. So that's the expense and the revenue that you have to show that washes each other out. Mm -hmm. But then you also have to pay your six-semester average mm -hmm. to the tech centers that your students are attending. So one's a wash and one's reality. Right. But then, so if it's supposed to be 87% of that total, like that's a lot more than 13% of 167,000 or whatever, you know. Um, like the total looks like it's too high if 
that's the case. Or if it's done differently, then yeah, just need to. <laughs> I guess I don't. Yeah, thirteen percent. You'd expect it to be a much smaller number to so the wash on your revenue side. One six one sixty seven three thirty two yep. is what the AOE is saying they're going to pay. Yep. Mm -hmm. That one sixty seven three thirty two is the expenditure to offset that revenue. Yeah, mm -hmm. got that. The one fifty six four oh five sixty nine is what you're projected to pay next year to your tech centers for your kids that are attending vocational education. So it's not. So it's in addition to the 167. Right. So in total, we're paying out over 300,000. No, because you don't really pay 187. It's right. part of it's. That's a total wash. You have to 167. You have to take no, that out that. of your mind altogether. But the tuition, the tech centers it's are the receiving way the statute requires. Yeah. Right, yeah. because that's how they hide, per prior business manager's statement. That's how the state hides how expensive it is to have vocational centers. Because you don't realize it in your local budget because you have to wash it in your local budget. But it's all, so yeah, in reality, it's three hundred and almost $400,000 for tech center tuition. But you only pay the actual tuition payments to your, tu your tech centers So okay. under 569. So do we, never, do we never actually charge anything to the 568 then? Is that what that means? It should be the wash based on what's on your cash flow statement from the Agency of okay. Education. That should match. So 569 is our actual, and that's the one we have to pay attention to. So tuition other. Okay, thank you. What does it work out for people for us? Do you know how many students that represents? Mm -hmm. We have 23 students who enroll in the center this year. It's not on current enrollment, it's a okay. six semester average. Yeah, right. And the numbers are driven by what the AOE gives us on that spreadsheet, right. which I don't have saved on this thumb drive because I only saved the budget and okay. saved the spreadsheet. <laughs> so it's a number that they give us in that big long equalized people and then we get a tech center one and then it's all rolled. Those numbers we get from them. The current enrollment impacts the Tech Center transportation reimbursement that we get. How many kiddos are riding the bus? So some of the other changes, just so you know what I did in this budget draft, prior to putting in the tier one cuts on the cuts page. Mm -hmm. I'm waiting for it to open. Oh. <laughs> I reduced the HRA to 50%. Okay. I reduced the custodial to six FTEs. I added the second tech FTE that we discussed at the last meeting that wasn't in there. The tech budget cuts from Ray. I had already reduced object code 531, which is the telephone, to $10,000 per building, which was based on actual spending and the projection of what you're going to pay for the rest of this fiscal year. And I updated the SPED and SU assessments to what they're actually supposed to be. And then um, I went back through the staff sheet, made the changes that were identified by the principals and again read every single contract that's in your two contract books to make sure that they were in there appropriately. And then I reduced the HRA administration expense down to $10,000, I think it was. Um, I didn't write that on my summary sheet here. Um, because I had a conversation and we pay $5 per employee per month. So I just took your employee count, multiplied that by five, multiplied that by 12. <coughs> and use that for the projection, okay. for the administration 
mm -hmm. of the HRA. Which was a dramatic decrease. It correct? was huge. It was $60. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it was I had it from in there for seventy seven eight forty, so it was a big drop. <laughs> but the SU SPED assessment kind of overshadowed. <laughs> A lot of the changes that we had made. And where's the SU SPED assessment? I believe it is on 2320. Okay. I don't know which page specifically it's on your printout. Oh, 11. I got Tether's sign everywhere, sorry. Yeah, it's on 32% increase. Well, and that's based on actual numbers? And I think part of that, too, oh. is your, oh, right. in the old budget, the pre-K and the SPED assessment were combined, so it makes it look like your SPED assessment was under what you actually paid last year. So mm -hmm. I think that could be part of what's SPED causing the discrepancy, where and then I actually moved the pre-K assessment to where it's supposed to be coded. Yeah. That's some of it. 1,200 is where the SPED Page eight, top of page eight is where we spend. Is that so? It's going from basically eight hundred eighty thousand to one million fifteen thousand. But your actual SPED assessment last year was eight hundred seventy nine thousand seven hundred twenty seven dollars and fifty seven cents, and the FY twenty one is one million fifteen thousand four hundred fifty dollars. And that's based on the needs of actual students that we have. Right. We actually budgeted right. SPED appropriately this year. So that's federal law, and there's no flexibility there. <laughs> Are we going to okay. wind up with a deficit that we have to deal with in FY20 for that? Probably. I hope not. But I can't tell you that. Okay. Next, next year report's not due for, I think it's due and in February the, or March. So the, the part that we sent right, to we still them. haven't even got the one right. from last year fixed. Um, can I ask why the but athletics? it also depends on needs. Yeah. And if you have more kids than what we projected for in the budget and we send out more referrals and more students right. to special sure. placements, absolutely you're gonna end up with a deficit. Sure. Um, you can't project needs year. Right. So needs I mean the care. SU special education budget on a whole only increased one percent. Did it like our percentage of it change? Yes. You went up to 36 something from but, 35. Yeah, but that doesn't seem like it would explain a 14% increase or a 15% increase. Though. That's like 1% on 1%. <clears throat> so it would be like that. Can I ask a question about 1400 athletics and co curricular? Uh, would you mind if we just so you went okay. your FY20 SPED assessment was 35.2%, 878, 733, round up to the nearest dollar from what was in the budget. Your FY21 proposed assessment is 36.3%, so it's an increase of $136,717. Okay. In your SPED assessment, which is the mistake that I discovered today is not the same assessment that your SU assessment is because the boards all made a decision in 2015 when you merged SUs that the SPED assessment was only to be determined by your ADM and your SU assessment is the average of the ADM and your October 1 enrollment numbers. So that's why for the SU you're 42% but for SPED, you're only 36% because it doesn't take into account your current enrollment. It's only the ADM number. So I had to go back through and redo all of the SPED assessments today. Should we have made a different, I mean, we were advised by our then business manager that that's how we should do things. There was a presentation in a conference room at the SU. Um, and I'm just wondering if for the future we should look at how we do that. I think that's a conversation that you have to have with your full board, mm -hmm. perhaps. 
Would you say our actual percentage was again? Sorry. For this year? The 36? 36.3 is this Fed assessment. Okay. So, the, so cross out the 42 and a half and it should be 36.3 for Fed. The total proposed sped budget, just to make sure the number on the spreadsheet or the sheet was right, was still around like 2.8 million. Is that what? It, yeah. yeah. 2.797383. Yep. Yeah. Any question about co curricular or do you want to do uh, Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to go to co curricular. The top three. Okay. Item on page, on page eight, yes. okay. fourteen hundred. So the supervisor salary went up by sixteen thousand six hundred and sixty. That was the formula error in the staff spreadsheet. And I, if you want to discuss any further than that, I think it needs to go into executive session because there's other impacts to the salary there. So okay. And then there's other salary, and then there's health insurance. Health insurance went up by. 11,000 and change. Is that a family plan? It's probably a I bet. That would be a family plan? That's a huge difference from. That's a big difference. And, and then can I ask 810 dues and fees basically doubled? Mm. Right. I think can you guys explain any of that? Uh, I have question marks next to them on my sheet. I don't know the answer to that. I would need to go back and look at the specifics for those. And yeah, the other part pull of that. From and why. They look like mistakes to me. Okay. And Tara, I'm, I'm sorry. Is the 81 a true number? Is that what we're saying? It, on the salary, I, oh. I just I'm confused as to. No. Okay, that was that's a mistake. Okay. That's not right. That wasn't any information. Okay, that was the mistake in the the formula error. In the formula error that. Okay. So what what should I guess we? Should, I mean, it's public. It's public information, right? It's published in the town report. The salary. So, Individual staff salary, just this. Just let's not tie names to them. But at the same time, that line is going to wind up being in. The, yeah, let's not tie a name, but like, what should that line actually equal? May I make a suggestion? Instead of having all these side discussions going on, either include everybody or. Well, there's some things that I absolutely cannot say in public session. I, I understand so, that. I mean, that's the board has to make that decision. I understand that, but it, I'm not going to put my job on the line. Right. Conversations going and not being able to hear any of them. Sure. Yep. Um, right now, we're trying to clarify the change in the line for 105 and the under athletics and co-curricular, which is the 1,400 on page. So should we make a list of things that we would discuss in non-public and then at the end we'll have a non-public session to get clarity on those before we move forward with this budget? Sounds I good. just feel like mm -hmm. I, we can and keep a list the and then okay. 109. move forward with that. Our object code 109, okay. I believe, is the coaches' salaries, so that's the 41. Um, I did have a question about... Um, 352, the other technical services, that one also, um, I'd made a note before that that looks like it's, like, do you guys know what that is for? I've got a question mark next to it on my sheet. Which one was it? Uh, 352. Page 8. Page 8. Page 8. Page 8. Page 8. Page 8. Yep. Basically, this hasn't had spending in it in previous years. That's not on this sheet. Budgeted for fifty-two thousand, and we spent one thousand in FY nineteen and three hundred fifty-seven so far this year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
So out of the 64, you've spent 357, 65,000. Um, out of 64,000, you spent 357 dollars. Perfect. Which maybe maybe it is like rest and stuff that just haven't come out yet. But it just seems it does that does seem seems like and significant. We didn't, either things were coded differently in FY19, or we didn't spend in that. Which which line are you on? Uh, 352. 352. There was $60,000 in, or $52,000 in contract and there's um, other technical services. Are there okay. examples for what that other technical services would include? Right, because it's still under athletics and co-curricular. So there was speculation maybe it's refs, but maybe not. <laughs> we don't know. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna look so it that. Thank you, Terry. My computer only works so fast. <laughs> <laughs> right, and then I'm curious about 600, 610, and 611. So we have athletic uniforms, um, which go, drops down to zero. But then general supplies, there's a decrease there, so I guess I don't have a question there. Um, but then supplies uniforms, and that's a decrease also. But what's the difference between athletic uniforms and supplies uniforms under 600 is the roll-up code. code, and it really shouldn't be under a 600 code. It really needs to be under the detailed code. So it should be under 611. Yeah, yeah I mean, right so, now that's... So 611 is the right one. Right. Okay. I just didn't understand that. 600 is the overlying roll-up for all supplies. So I roll that all up when I file the stat report. Okay. Were we also going to look at 730, thinking that we could reduce that, that we thought we bumped it for some big equipment purchases? I might be mistaking this conversation, but I thought we had had some planned large ticket items at one point, so we bumped it up, but we thought on a year-to-year -year basis we didn't spend that, so we could take that back down. Right, that was the... Uh Treadmills and oh, treadmills, right? Right. Yeah, I did think that we were decreasing that some. Uh, it was like we discussed that on last Thursday, that between the curtain and not doing treadmills and stuff, that would decrease. So what's been paid out of that 352 fund so far is your portable toilet. <laughs> portable toilet. That's huh? important, actually, Looking if you've ever been to a soccer game. Light because. rental. What? Light rental. Okay. Okay. So that was... Asbestos awareness. Okay. Yeah, that's Asbestos awareness in... It's not under 1400. Okay. Just, I just looked up object code 352. Okay. okay. So if I just stick with the 1400 it's your toilets and your lights. Okay. So far is what's been paid for out of there. And how my much thought is that there been? could have been paid. It's $946.68. Um, I believe Bruce, please correct me or principals correct me if I'm wrong. Didn't coaches or umps and refs didn't they used to get paid differently than how they're being paid this year? Yeah, you used to get pay out of a checkbook and have to get reimbursed by central office. The, uh, and now they're getting paid by central, central office. office. Yeah, the, so the, I don't the, know um, if that was taken into account and it's just it not was being something the processed. Auditors request, right. requested us to I just remember hearing it, something. It's just a process. Like it shouldn't affect, it shouldn't affect the, the number, though. The number of the actual expenditure. I'm wondering I if... I have her back so, up her budget, so I can't answer these questions. Can, can we, if we, if we, last year we paid $357 out of that budget line, and this year our total so far has been? Well, last year it was 900 and this year it's 300 It's been 300 Are Could we be comfortable reducing that to, I mean, even if we reduced it to 5000 we'd be significantly over what we're spending. Yeah. And yeah. I'm talking that's, about 352 Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm wondering if this is such a big number because it was where the painting of the floors and the re mm -hmm. and the you know colors on the bleachers and that should have all been under building and maintenance. That would have been. Yeah, but it's, yeah. yeah. Not I'm under just, contracted services for athletics. 
Mm. I mean, right. I, but if the are we so, comfortable going down further, or do we think five thousand makes sense? Or just a I mean, that's, placeholder. Yeah, it's a big jump. It's a pretty significant jump already. That's forty five thousand yeah. dollars, forty seven thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Five thousand sounds good. That sounds like a sufficient budget to pay for light rentals and portable toilets. Well, I think we also need to find out what else was put there before you make that decision. That's fine. That, this is my recommendation. Yeah. Because I, mean, I, I, I would hate to see you short yourself if she actually put something in there that she knows is going to be an expense. Well, it's it was in FY19 budget at 63000 It was increased a little bit for FY20 and then decreased by 10000 for FY21. So... And it hasn't been spent in either FY19 or FY20, so my guess is that we just are continuing it along, but there's not anything specific for it. So how would we but, find that out? Yeah, let's let's get. I think your your building administration would need to go back and review the budget that was submitted by your athletic co-curricular director to find out what those okay. expenditures were. You say we need justification, or else it's getting. And that's, those aren't things that yeah, I have made I, up. Yeah. I think that, that we can good. preliminarily cut it to 5000 and then ask Heidi like, why we shouldn't cut it to 5000 yeah. um, Because we don't want to cut anything that's going to hurt students. I mean, we want minimal impact on our students. But if it's been over-budgeted for the last three years, yeah. I mean, and we're then, still over-budgeting at $5,000 if we spent $1,000, but not, but not by such a huge percentage. And, and I, I guess I would like some explanation for 810 doubling too. I mean, there could be a very good reason that we misbudgeted last year with the change in how the two schools went together. I could, I could foresee that. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. That, you know, South Ralton used to spend 15,000 or Bethel whatever, and when we put combined. Um, but I guess if we, if we knew why that doubled, that would be helpful. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so do we have an uh, so somebody in the administ of the administrators is going to be looking into this all of you or is one individual <laughs> where is where is Heidi's office one of the, the challenges that the administration has is that we we look at the 25 page version right. of the story yeah. so these codes when we see them show up in four different places mm -hmm. uh, so we don't see the total unless we take out a calculator and cross-reference the totals um, yeah so they just they're trying to find out who's going to take it on yeah remember how I taught you how to filter by object code <laughs> so that's what I just I mean, I, I think right. if we can but make with, with 26 pages of specific line items, yeah, we're not filtering every line item to see how they all roll up together. I mean, I uh, think realistic. I think I mean, you can use the spreadsheet I sent you though that has it all totaled, and then you can drill down and get individual line yeah. items if you want. Like I find that that works pretty well. And some oh. of these cuts do equal that curriculum. I mean, you know, if we right. could cut forty-five thousand dollars, there's our. FTE for the outdoor program that we're not reducing what we promised the community when we started this merger process. I, I, I mean, that's a concern of mine. And I, and I, so who's going to take it on? Yeah, so which one of the administrators is going to um, find out about these discrepancies within 1400 athletics and co-curricular? Because we identified 352, we'd like to bring that down to 5,000 unless there's some actual line items that are absolutely necessary that we're not seeing. And then 810, we'd love to see, I think, love to know why that's doubled. Yeah, so it looks to me like it was doubled because we were doing equity between the two campuses where there was a lot of dues and fees for the high school but not much for the middle school or something like that. Or no, it's for co-curricular. So they split it between, never mind. That both the athletics and co curricular. Um, what was our last yeah. expense? So, with the light rental, is that like the drama a, light rental as oh, well as the field soccer, light rental? The, the night, the night, the soccer night soccer lights so that right. needed to be, plus there's year. lights okay. that you do have to rent for so your so events our that happen mm -hmm. in the yeah. auditorium or gymnasium stages. Mm -hmm. So, that's all rentals. 
yeah, and that only came to nine hundred dollars last what year. What we have paid so far, yeah. yeah. But yeah. I would also not bank on probably there was other expenditures that weren't coded right. Yeah. Okay. And another factor is last year we ran one clay. Um, and this year will it two? And our, our goal last year was to have two plays and or a play, a uh, improv night, and a musical. Uh, this year we will have a musical, and there will be additional expenses. Uh, it'll be a bare bones budget this year, but uh, I, I, I've heard from the community that they would like to see the return of the spring musical yes. to its prior glory, which it's will splendor. which will be a bigger budget production than what we're doing this year. We we have a contract for about fifteen hundred dollars for the rights to this year's play. Uh, any of the big Broadway shows. Uh, usually three to five thousand dollars for just for the rights, uh, and I don't know if that normally gets coded here or not. We do. I mean, that's a dues and fees. So um, okay. You know, some of this is some of this is merger related because it used to just be athletics, and all the co-curricular lines got added when, with the merger, we decided to have a co-curricular program. Um, and so you know, last year we were chasing games and coaches and uniforms the entire year. Um, and this year we're just getting a new co-curricular director in place right. uh, and figuring stuff out, so, okay. as well as the new budget director. Okay. So, Reed, is this something that you'll be able to get clarification on for us? Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm confident, having had the discussion so far, that we'll be able to save a good chunk of money in these lines. Okay, thank you. I have questions marked next to them mm -hmm. on my document. <laughs> um, okay. Move on to another yeah. area. Where, yeah. where are you well, going? Ask questions. Uh, Twenty-two thirteen staff training. What page? <coughs> page ten. Thank you. Uh, we have one hundred thirty-eight thousand five hundred dollars for tuition benefit, um, and we have a like. FY nineteen basically wasn't used at all, and FY twenty it's at eight thousand. Because everything was. Probably coded to 320. That is okay. a huge switch in the way professional right, right. development is paid for. But this even in, like, I think right, uh, I think the total amount is still too much. So, is the tuition benefit the piece that's contractually obligated yes. for everybody? Yes. Tuition credits? benefit. Yep. Yep. That's okay. what that portion is, and then the 320 under 2213 should be any professional development that's done by the district. So okay. you're in service days. And so that's increased from roughly two thousand dollars to thirty three. We had talked last <laughs> week about it was all under all the separate function codes under three twenty. Okay. So that's really just representative just of pulling together everything. So it's not a dramatic increase. I, I think it is. I have a question mark next to it. Uh, it, it shows up under the 2020 location code. Uh, and I'd Could be school wide. Um, because it seems like 2,000 is a really small sum for that, but 33,000 yeah. seems big. We know yeah. for sure that mm -hmm. there are no plans to bring in trainers or speakers or things like that mm -hmm. from yeah. our office. Okay. Yeah, I'm so wondering that, if it's more of a typo that maybe it was meant to be $3,500 or... Well, or it could be, as Tara said, other lines right. for things that are needed that get rolled up into this. Didn't I just mm -hmm. read that you all sent people to CPI training? That would come out of their... It, you didn't do it as an above and beyond, you did it out of their... We don't send them out, we have a trainer here. Yeah, that's okay. no cost. That would be good there. Okay. But, okay. Good question. Yeah. It's more like that. We have Alex, I think we're last name, but from the Chevron. Chevron who does trauma training at <coughs> once a month at every other campus. That would pay for her because she comes in as a cult. Mm -hmm. But that is very reasonable. That's not no way that expensive. <laughs> right. I was going to say, maybe I need to switch jobs. Yeah. I'm yeah. looking at. Let's not tell her we have <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> I mean, back to the kind of original thing, though. I think between those two lines, between the 320 mm -hmm. and 250, I, I know we've been 
budgeting in one place and spending in another, but I think we have both of those combined are more than what we've been using. I, I agree. And Reed, did I hear that you had a question mark there too? Yep. So I got lots of notes next to this. Okay. Section. Is that something that you could take on as well? I guess we're giving everything to well, you because you, you're speaking uh, first. I, I already looked and uh, yeah. the increases are coming from the Bethel campus, so that would be a question I think okay. Andrea and Owen. I mean, I don't, it's not from the South Royalton. Okay. Okay. We didn't put it in, so I don't. So know. then, <laughs> so then well, Andrea, and o, Andrea or Owen, we'd be asking you guys to get clarification on that part? So, um, I don't know because I'm seeing this like you right now. Uh huh. Okay. But okay. I'm more than happy to look at it. Okay, Thank you. perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, just looking at those two codes, though, right now we have, I mean, I have it totaled up by code. So the total for like all the departments for 320 and 250 right now is budgeted 220 something. 219.96. For which one? For both contracted instructional okay. services and the tuition benefit. Mm -hmm. So that's 220,000 and... It was 187, 199. Yeah. Um, so just to look at like what we have in FY19 there, it's about 100,000. Um, and FY20 so far is 78,000. So I think we can cut, a, I mean, not cut, but right size that. Well, 250, if that's contracted, that should be pretty e a pretty easy number to find. So we just need to... What do you mean? If, if this benefit is a contracted benefit, this 138, right, 500? Right, but I think that that's a benefit that they can access that they don't necessarily, not everybody's not doing it's classes every, every single year. time. So, you know, like some percent, it's kind of like the HRA, some okay. percentage of it gets used. Okay. And some percent doesn't, and I think we've been, we don't necessarily need the budget for the whole thing. So we just need to know that that's a so risk. So between the two, mm -hmm. it seems like we could probably, you know, mm -hmm. Get seventy thousand dollars or something like that. I don't know what the appropriate amount to trim it entirely, but you know, I think that those two we could get a significant amount of money. Um, so, I think I think what the approach should be would be figure out what the total amount we want for those two categories and then spread it out appropriately. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how best to have that happen. Well, I, th I mean, I think that the 33000 is the easier one to cut. So if we had an idea of what we wanted for... Right, know. but I mean, like, those... <coughs> basically, the two codes are two different things. Right. And, um, you know, we need to... Can I suggest you guys just tell us the categories you'd like to see the money come out of and tell us how much you want cut, and we'll go back and do it? Rather than you know speculating on some of this, I, I think. Well, I don't necessarily. I mean, the thing with this though is that like, part of the problem is that it's been coded in different places, expensed in different places, and budgeted in different places. And what we want to do is have it so that our budget matches what our expenses are. So, you know, I think between the two codes, we want to take out a bunch, but then you want them spread out among the different schools and different codes and stuff, so that it's where we're actually going to be spending it so that when we get our expense reports later we don't have this mismatch of budget to expenses you know so i don't know what the best way of making it so that our expenses are going to match what we're actually budgeting but like that's kind of what i'm asking is like can we take this amount out, out and then make sure that it's budgeted in the correct lines appropriately yeah thanks too and one of the things that i'm concerned about is like for example with the co-curricular piece I really don't think that we want to see $50,000 worth of cuts if there's $50,000 worth of programming that happens with that money. Right. But if it's been over budgeted, then that's a place where we could find $50,000 that doesn't hurt our students or our community. So I just don't feel like I have all the information to really make a clear direction right, right. now. And if I that think, makes sense. You know, 
we need to be looking at these things to see if there's places that have been under budgeted so that if the fifty thousand dollars that was in the athletic budget is actually supplementing some other place in the budget mm -hmm. you know we don't want to cut it and then wind up with a huge deficit but anyway we just need to make our make it more reflect reality and i'm happy to do whatever you all decide you want to do these are <laughs> object codes that i do not control i know can we move on to another section? Are we ready? Do we want to try and specify an amount for them to trim that by? Oh. How much have they spent so far? So between 250 and 320. Mm -hmm. um, so far this year, it's 79,000. This is a rough estimate. 79,000. And last year was 95,000. I think it's important when we think about that tuition benefit. Um, okay, so it's $95,000 that represents the whole year. But I know that sometimes there are programs like the Middle Grades Institute that a PO gets written for at the end of the year. People are taking it for credit. And so I just want to make sure that there's still money in that pot. We always under budget year. for what the potential is in that category because we know people aren't working on their master's degree. All the time. Yeah. How about we say a total of one hundred and fifteen thousand for the two line codes? One hundred fifteen thousand. Yeah, I think that seems reasonable. Um, so that would mean trimming those two line codes by what did we say the total was? Two nineteen nine sixty. So if we're taking it down to one hundred fifteen, that'd be one hundred and four thousand dollars. In savings. Yes. For, okay. I mean, not real savings, but, but yeah. right. <laughs> budget savings. I see. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. there's some features. <laughs> you want to move on to another section? I have a question. And, yeah, section, um, where are we? Uh, page 11, okay. 2410, off to the principal. Uh, number 106, we see clerical salary, where in fiscal year 20 there was nothing, and now fiscal year 21 we're asking for 162000 It was probably just a coding. Those are going to be for your administrative assistance. That's where they okay. need to be coded under. Okay. Where had they been before? I think they were bundled with the principal. Okay. I don't think so. Wait. No? Mm -mm. Yeah, because the, the admin salary is where the principals are, and that mm -hmm. was... Okay. Many schools have done that. Um, well, I was just trying to look for where that clerical might have been placed in the previous year. And at this point, I haven't found it. So, so we don't have to pay anything into Vemers for those administrative assistants. I'm on 234. I was thinking, I don't think they're... They're on a municipal mm -hmm. Should be, just like the people in our office. Okay. Well, we have Anxious had study. spending in those categories in retirement beamers yep. under office of the principal, but that might have been miscoded. But we think they should be, right? I think they also get a mandatory contribution. That's what I thought. They're on the same, they're on the support mm -hmm. staff contract? Yes. <coughs> we need to add that mandatory contribution. Right, For clerical staff? That's what I mean. For, For the administrative mm -hmm. support mm -hmm. staff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess it's historical. I still don't know where <laughs> this would have been otherwise, though. Yeah, I'm sure. Sure.
I don't have any more areas. Does anyone, is everyone still looking? I don't have any more areas, but I'm just saying that I haven't found where uh, the clerical salary was in another place. So I'd love for that to be, that's kind of a mystery. Because I'll, you know, otherwise the office of the principal is increased by 32%. I'll help with that, find that. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so I do. Okay. I'm gonna, okay. I have your old budget. I'm going to see if I can look it up in here. Okay. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Already. Remember, we increased it by a by, uh, by a position. Yep. Last year during the year, so it wasn't budgeted for. Mm -hmm. That's not going to make up for all this. But <clears throat> some of that. Well, you had some raises for those staff this year. Right. That. And we did add a support person in Royal. So. Right. It looks like we talked about the overtime salary line under right. 2610. I don't think that's been changed. I think you were saying that that was for summer help in Royalton. Yes. Um, can we get that moved to somewhere else? Or, that's I don't know. Coding. What's that? That's where they're coding. They're a 103 code. They're not a regular Well, it's 130, though. It's overtime salary. Yeah. Sure, but they haven't. It hasn't been coded to that in the past. Um, and <coughs> sure. <laughs> I mean, it, like nothing's been coded to one thirty, really. something in FY19. Which would make more sense for that line code. <coughs> so we think 130 we could probably bring down some as well. I mean if yeah, if, there, if, if we're budgeting it somewhere else if we think it's that. Either so we need to reduce where it had been being spent you know, if we're changing it to this. Just for those who weren't here last year, last meeting, this is a line code that we think we're billing summertime help to, and it's titled overtime salary. So it's not necessarily overtime. Correct. Is there another code for summer help for temporary employees? I mean, we could put it under custodial salary. Put it under 103, but. which is your salaries for subs, but they're not really subs. Right. And 107 is technical or summer salary, but just technical salary. You know, that, that would fit in with our technical or mm -hmm. yeah, so Can you create? I mean, like, can no. you create a category <coughs> for summer salary? All it's going to change, anyways, on July 1st. So mm -hmm. yeah. And then you charge the cats come out. Um, if we're not using that, that and would be stick another. It, stick it in other salary. Ten I mean, grand. The overtime salary? Yeah. I mean, if we're spending a thousand out of it. <laughs> Let me yeah. see what we spent last year. Other lines, Andrew? No, that's fine. Well, um, you know, we've reduced a bunch of codes. The repairs and maintenance and the 420 and 431 codes we've been way over budget on. And so we need to go through and make sure that, you know. So I don't know if we want to add money to those codes so that we're not. Which but I don't, I don't, and the hard part here is that there's been a lot of 
one-time expenses for the merger. Mm -hmm. and repairs. And so, it, it looks like we added we a uh, quite a bit in 420. Right. We have. Okay. Um, but uh, we spent 177,000 in FY19 and 115,000 in FY20. Fair. So, did we add enough? <laughs> well, and, the other um, thing we want to think about is you know, I think a lot of these other categories that we're finding savings in are, are probably we're subsidizing because, yeah, these bills. Right. Yeah. And so. Well, we got to think of the boiler. I don't know if there's a way that we can, um, I know we're trying to make cuts, but we've also got to be re re remembering that we have a boiler that needs. Yeah. So you run over your pay. second, your reserve boiler right now here, the, and on the boiler tracks, right? No one, Andrew? Yeah. That was not the first thing. When, when was that? The 12 hours ago? Yeah. Okay. We did an estimate. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, fine. I mean, it's the backup is fine for now. The backup. Do the backup also, correct? Also, <laughs> the coldest nights in the morning. Yeah, right. We're into some pretty right. cold. Weather. I mean, I. Like, well, for one thing, I don't really know. Like, 420 is supposed to be cleaning services, and so I don't know what we're doing <laughs> in there. That's been so much. But the repairs and maintenance, it seems like maybe we should increase that since we keep going over that. Right. I mean, the 431, you're saying repairs and maintenance, or is there? Yes. I still don't feel like I'm clear on where exactly we went over on that. If we knew that it was on building or if, if we knew that it was on things that were truly one-time expenses, or that have yeah. been expenses rolled out over the past two years, um, then it feels like we could make a more informed decision. But right now, with the information that I have, I don't feel like I can make a, a good decision. What object are you talking about? I'm lost. 420, 420 and 431. 420 and 431. But I'm, I'm focused more specifically on 431, because that's an area that we know from the audit, the, the draft audit that we got that we did um, have a deficit in, or where we overspent. Um, so I just want to make sure that we're adequately funded in an area. Um, but if we can cut, because we've done the things we set out to do, that we can and I'm take seeing some there. things in here that shouldn't be coded here. OK. I'm looking, at, I'm looking at 420. And for an example, you have $17,963 for 6,500 gallons from Dead River. That has its own object code. Yeah. So, so this is, again, where they're being, invoices are being coded at the building level under the wrong codes. OK. They're going to the wrong spot in the budget. Okay. So I mean, that's you know, that 17 grand. Is like, how, how do we? Well, I mean, it's kind it of out. useless to do journal entries in FY19 now in the closing right. of the year. Right, right, right. But it's good information that that was happening in addition to all the journal entries the auditors are having us do. Yeah, the problem is that we're trying, like, we're... We're cutting a lot of money. We're cutting yeah. a lot of money. And if the fuel oil, like, we're trying to set it based on FY19, what we spent in FY19 and FY20, and those numbers are wrong, and then we're, you know, like we've got to base these on something. And so we need to have those numbers. I mean, from that somehow. information, we should bring up can you? I mean, yeah, you got you electricity that's that? coded here. I mean, it's can you stressful. export that so no, that I can, um, you know, I can add it to these categories and try <clears> and come up with um, what our actual values were. Um, like, if you send the list of transactions for the 420 and 431 codes, I'll see what I can do. With them. But I'll probably need some help from the. Absolutely. Administrators to like show what things are. There was another thing that we had asked the administrators to look into. I guess this is like down the road after the budget. So I'll just save it for later. Good time in the minutes, maybe. Um, it was in the minutes last time, I think. It was just about getting clarification on grounds for plowing oh, yeah. and. Yeah. One of you going to take that on? And 
was the other one? I think David said he was going to take that on. Clarification. <laughs> yes, I can do that. Historical grounds. Yeah, historical on both campuses, and then what's <clears> the actual, uh, what's the contract now, and an idea of, is that the best way, you know, one contract for both campuses? For snow removal and for you know groundskeeping, is that? Well, I think the next time it comes up, we said we were going to go to multiple bids, right? Separate mm -hmm. contracts. Separate mm -hmm. contracts. Mm -hmm. And we did put in our latest RFPs that they could bid on both or one or the other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you. we do want to look at historically what was paid in the past, so that we can kind of see if. South, South Royalton's um, prior year contract was for $70,000 for both from one provider. Mm -hmm. So what our share of this is is in line with what it was in the past. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So from looking at this um, and knowing how much work I know the principals did in the um, presentation today, I think we need to decide if we're going to ask that that be put in the next draft. I mean, it's hard to know. Like, we need to kind of know how close we are to our target mm. before we can know whether we want Your target is? I, I, my target is holding the equalized tax rate, essentially. I, I would like to see a budget with the, the cuts or the, like, reductions and corrections in this budget. Mm -hmm in addition to that tier one work, with exception to the outdoor program. Um, I think it makes sense, or what I'm hearing makes sense, at the elementary level in terms of right-sizing classes. Um, and I'm comfortable with that. Um, I'm just, I, I just was thinking about what you said about building an enduring outdoor ed program. I don't know. I, I agree, and I, I think ideally the uh, it sounds like the boiler issue is at, at the point that it needs to be done. And so as soon as we get that um, uh, bid, we should essentially put that into a budget as well. So, and I didn't say this, but I, we did talk about this earlier. I, I also think, though, when talking to union about potential cuts, what we should say is that it could be potentially three cuts because I think it should be dependent on our preschool screening. So right You're now, talking about the elementary teachers. I'm still talking about elementary teachers, but I'm actually saying it should be three dependent on preschool screening because right now we have two preschool teachers in the budget for the Bethel campus. I think we should not automatically go with two preschool teachers. We don't need them. So okay. It could be more for their savings, but we won't know until April 15th. And April 15th. <coughs> So it seems like we should budget for that person, we but then... Budget but notify the, board, notify the union that there could be three potential cuts, not two. Okay. I mean, the problem, always bring uh, them back. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, I think the problem is the, your results that you're going to get from your screening are going to depend on what the options are they're presented with. So if they're given a full, full day preschool option, that might change their response. I don't response think full day preschool is going to go away. Okay. It's on the budget. Mm -hmm. like and we are dogs, I think people expect it. <laughs> <laughs> so can I ask again what the board's budget Sorry. target is? Mm -hmm. um, we we want to essentially be level funded. But from an equalized tax rate right. purpose, not like we need to hold the same budget number. It's after you do the cal factor calculation with the change in students and change in revenue and all that stuff. That and that make some substantial cuts. Well, do you want to yeah. see tier two and tier three? So again, if so we go there, I think we need to look at the rest of the tiers. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. So a lot of tiers. Right. So and we may need to go deeper than what's in the additional tiers if we want to be level funded. Okay. Um, and I, mean, I think I, if that's your goal, I think you have to tell us that and we'll do it. I, I feel like we did at our last meeting. Yeah, um, I mean, yeah we said no more. Uh, I had goal right. for is two percent is what I had circled. Yeah, but that's two percent of the e Royalton equalized rate, which was 
Yeah, we didn't go into that level of detail. Two percent. No, I just said two percent was right. that your goal, and I interpreted that to mean two percent on the expenditure budget. Okay, that was how I interpreted that. I'm sorry, not yeah. on your tax rate. Okay, but at the last meeting we were also talking about the tax rate, and so I think that that um, should also be Did that after considered. Happened after I left because I don't remember any conversation about the tax rate. The no, I, no, it may have been before you arrived. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, do we have the number of what is a percentage on the tax? Is that a terror question? Mm -hmm. I'm going to see if it's on my sheet here. It's 1.6 cents, so whatever that comes out to. It's 1%, so that 2% increase would be. 3.2 cents, which is like a hundred and eighty down to see if Rodney is raising his hand. So mm. I keep forgetting to look down to see if you want to jump in. And oh, I'm no, sorry. No, no. He's keeping time. Okay. I'll just worry about it. Do it. Yeah. 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 I just keep feeling guilty. So did you say what the one percent on the tax was, Andrew? Uh, I mean, it's tough to make it into it. No, I did okay. not. Well, while they're um, figuring that out, did you want to show us tier two and three? Want to? Do you want to? Well, we we'll have to say because two. we built tiers two and three with the understanding that the board wanted substantial cuts, and some of these are things that could happen out of necessity, but they're not necessarily our recommendations. Okay. So mm -hmm. Just put that as a caveat. And then Tara might. Question. I hate to ask you a question while you're looking up the answer to the previous question. I don't have the answer to the previous one. I'm writing okay. it down to look it up. Okay. On the estimated tax rate sheet, it says that we need to get our per pupil cost down to $18,756 for there to be no penalty. So what is, is that the, the one penalty? That's printed out? Yes. I think there, Andrew and I were talking about that when I first got here. The formula didn't carry over right. It was adding the cuts the tier one cuts that they gave me earlier today rather than deducting them oh my so on the tax sheet right. per people isn't quite as bad as that so, so this you're useful. under the penalty right now anyways at the taking out the 164,000 okay. adding back in 27,000 for the outdoor thing brings it the changes to 164 328 so that brings your per pupil um, Spending to eighteen six one seven fourteen, and the threshold this year is eighteen seven fifty six. Okay, so you're under the threshold. Just want to make sure that while we still are getting that point zero four reduction, mm -hmm. that we're actually getting that. Yeah, and not being penalized and losing. Um, before we move on to cuts, can we just look at the revenue sheet real quick? Revenue. Revenue. So we have sixty thousand disappearing from Medicaid reimbursement. Is yep. that not getting Medicaid funds? Nobody is. And is there a reason for that, or just, just federal not? Medicaid funds? You need to submit a plan, and it has to be approved by the Medicaid Medicaid group. Yeah, it can't be automatic. Cannot be. They have to. Cannot they have to tell budget us for what it. They're going to use it for. Okay. And then submit a plan. I mean. Is that something that we can do, though? Like Your principals were advised if they wanted to access Medicaid funds, they needed to submit a plan by the grant coordinator at the last meeting. I think we were also advised not to. Yes, we were. Yeah. Really. We were, because it's not money. To well, we spent an awful lot of right. it on literacy materials. That's what mm -hmm. I'm we're basically saying. So there's right. not much there. Right. We right. asked if we should, and we were told that we should not. Okay. So as far as the like Medicaid's never a guarantee. Right. The reimbursement based on necessity and needs and what we submit up. 
So why I don't understand how we don't have needs any longer. Well, we still have needs. Yeah. Okay. But you don't know how much Medicaid revenue you're going to get until you know what your reimbursement, so what students qualify okay. for Medicaid. Your file count drives that number. But based on usage uh -huh. of the Medicaid funds in the last fiscal year. Because we spent it all. And we spent it all. Right. And continue to spend it on positions that were promised to be paid through Medicaid funds. Okay. That may not we may not get all of that Medicaid money this fiscal year. Because okay. the Medicaid cushion is gone. Right. So then why would we not apply for more money? I Cynthia, don't still getting so money. that's a Cynthia, good Cynthia yeah. question. Cynthia Bruce, is I the think. one that told them We're still okay. getting the money. I think yes. it's just the pot is building Again. where it's sitting. Right? Am I understanding that correctly? Well, you're, you, there's positions that are allocated to be covered by Medicaid funds in the FY20 budget cycle in this fiscal year that... So one of the plans in 173 is to take that Medicaid away. I have to be so careful what I say. And, and we don't... I mean, that's a state decision okay. about how that's going to go. So we're trying to be very conservative and say, look, we exhausted what we have, probably we've more than exhausted what we have, and we really can't anticipate that we're going to have it again until we see it, see it. And we were told that by the auditors, you should not do this right away, that you should wait mm -hmm. until it builds up a little bit more before you commit things to that. And so, so if we are is what I'm saying. overspending our <coughs> Medicaid grant budget, then are we lining ourselves up for another deficit? There's, it's not a Medicaid grant. Or Medicaid. It's Medicaid reimbursement. Reimbursement. So okay. our Medicaid clerk mm -hmm. has to submit quarterly reports to the government, and we get a reimbursement, a percentage mm -hmm. of that back as a reimbursement. That number fluctuates based on child count who qualify for Medicaid. Okay. Your, your, the answer to your question, I believe, is no. However... The, the auditors told us we, we've been living on it for the last year and we probably should slack off for a little bit. Um, so are we that's, doing that? That's what we're trying to do. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, we, right. don't, we don't have, when Tara's saying we're not, we're pulling that back, we're just doing what the auditors told us to, to stay off it and not make commitments right now. Mm -hmm. So. All right. Still collecting the money, not planning to spend it. So okay. On purpose. Fine. Thank you. I appreciate that clarification. Yeah, we've got one person in the office that that's all she does. Right. Is, but her salary is also paid for it. Mm -hmm. Along with many others. Okay. Um, so are we not using grant funds for positions anymore? Because This supervisory union still is doing that. It has been a highly high recommendation from Cynthia that when we do our grant plans for next year that we try to take that away and try to <coughs> find a better way to use grant funds because if you use grant funds to pay the salary then you pay that 19 percent penalty right. but, but we're not changing you that can't, for this year. right you can't budget locally for a position and then get grant money for it ever again and you can't budget for a position locally and then also get grant money for it because then you're supplanting and that's against the law. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that we were, like we have the 19% match in our budget so I wanted to make sure those positions were still grant funded. And if our free and reduced numbers continue to drop, our grant money is going to continue to drop. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm
Well, we already are changing the way the free and reduced applications are being done because we are being made to do so by the child nutrition program. So all free and reduced applications have to go through me. So when the next school year rolls out, there's gonna it will be coming to me, not to the schools, and I'm going to also be rolling out an online application. So I'm hoping by taking that personal person out of the free and reduced process that maybe we'll get some better participation from families. Because it'd be more private? Yeah. Right. And if we have higher participation, then we can do free breakfast for everybody, then we can do potentially even free lunch at some point. If you go to that program. Okay. And it drives our other grants. And it, but it drives all your grants. Mm -hmm. so. Right. So that would be such a goal. Um, back on the Medicaid reimbursement thing, I can understand not spending out of that pot of money, but why are we not? You cannot budget for it locally in your revenue, is what the auditors told me. Okay. And just if we get to stuff. To offset your local revenue, you shouldn't be doing that. Mm -hmm. But it seems like that's like an estimate of what you're expecting to get, right? We didn't get anything last year. We didn't get anything? We didn't get anything. It all went to Pontus and Pinnell. So we spent it on other stuff, is what you're saying? Right? Yes, you kept the Medicaid money and spent <laughs> it on Pontus Pinnell, which was for the benefit of all kids in the entire supervisory union. Sure. I'm still confused about how this all works, but okay. Um, is the tuition number accurate for this year? That was adding five at 17137 is what we did for the revenue projection based on what we have right now. Adding five to, I mean, this, this number, the 499, was basically two years ago. Right. I don't know what number you used to build your budget last year. Um, I think we just took the previous year's revenues. So we don't have an estimate of what our revenue is for this year. Last time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I did. There's so much of this stuff. You make darn sure to get that. Oh, In your good. count of kids. <laughs> oh, the count of kids, but we don't But I did a... the revenue last time, and I just can't find it in here. Uh... Okay. Sorry, the tuition stuff is... So are we showing you tier two and three yet, or are we still? Can can the tuition number be verified for the next draft? I'm just wondering. So that was adding that five kids. Tuition. Okay, and we think that's safe to add five kids. Let's see. Four, five, the six, seven. Mm-hmm. I just was trying to find the number. I That's emailed it out to good. all of you. Right. Yeah. I remember that. So that makes sense. I think, or I gave it to us last meeting. No, you did email it. I mean, I have a, a list, but it doesn't have the number. No, that was before. Oh, okay. Right. Uh, Can we move on to the next tier? I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't mean to cut you off, but. No, that's all right. Um, feel like we need the information on what a percent is on that rate and so tier two adds another ninety nine thousand dollars in personnel reduction is that the one up there plus two these are cuts that you've seen proposed before uh, but just broken out by priority that includes the one third of a French position <coughs> The world language position at the elementary school mm -hmm. level. <coughs> the 2.5 FTE, which is the high school family and consumer science program. Mm -hmm. And the summer driver's ed. <coughs> okay. And then the tier three. <coughs> and 
by the way, those cuts within the tier are not prioritized. So in other words, we're not saying the one that's first mm. is the one we'd like to cut first. Okay. If you wanted to break that down. Yeah, that's good information. When we were talking about paraeducators um, before, I mean, can, can you cut one or two of them, or does, is it all or none? We can do anything you want us to do. So, so I... And that would be by seniority. Yeah, and I think we thought process, or the thought process around that is that if you cut the last two higher, they make the least amount of money. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's not... Well, yeah. the answer to the question is we'll do it if, yeah. if you want it that way. Yeah. I'm so. curious what just the first tier gets us. I don't feel like I have a clearer sense of that at this point in time yet, minus the outdoor ed piece. I just feel like moving from where we are now to to a pretty harmful place in terms of budget doesn't make a lot of sense to me if we don't know what amount of money is going to trim a percent from from the actual tax rate um, it just I, it feels like a really painful mathematical exercise that I don't know that we need to go through if we don't need to. Mm -hmm. How the rest of you feel about that? I, mean, I, I would say I, I agree with that. I mean, we need to know what the tax rate actually is and how much these cuts are changing. Right. If we don't need to make a million dollars in cuts, then why would we do that? Or even talk about it until we find out. Something. Right. Or even really mm -hmm. go through it in a way as if it's somehow becoming reality. I don't. I don't feel like I have a clear enough understanding of the things that we pulled out that we think may be errors or that could easily be reduced. In addition to that tier one minus the outdoor ed piece, like I want to see what that does, I guess. And if if that all gets plugged in and it's not coming out as close enough, then we could start to. I mean, I would think we would ask for you to start to prioritize based on under enrollment, et cetera, et cetera. But I don't. I really don't want to be getting to this place. Where Which we're place? tier two, or tier, tier two three? and tier three. Mm -hmm. I really do not want to have to get there. And no, and we and we don't want to either. Right. Um, we just, based on priorities, start you know, with the goal yeah. of least effect on students. Mm -hmm. um, Try to show you as much money that was possible. Yeah. Depending on what you needed. And just to be clear, tier one includes two elementary yes. school students, and then tier three includes another two, so it'd be a total of four. Yes. That's correct. Potentially five, if our enrollment. And Preschool were low. Okay. Yeah, and that concerns me also. So, it, was that direct enough? I don't know. I start to ram ramble after 9 p.m. just to be totally transparent. <laughs> Do you have any no nutrition this year? Not yet. Yep. Well, we may, but we don't know about it yet. Okay. Um, anyone else have thoughts on this? Um, I agree with what you said. Okay. Um, I would like to return to the revenue. At some okay. Point. So, All right. So, looking at your count of students, I got or just the list that you sent out. I have 43 tuition students for this year. And if we multiply that by 17, 250. We're not all of them. <clears throat> What's that? We don't get that for all of them. No. Well, what do we get? Like, because like if they go to RTCC, you don't get tuition for them. If they go to Hartford, you only get a half a tuition for them. So why, if they're going to RTCC, do we not get? Like, why do they even count towards our? They're on your list because we track them. And so, their SBAC and scores their come back come to us. Here and, and they can play sports here. And right, even though right. they go to RTCC, they have to identify a high school. Mm -hmm. So how do we get a list of, like, 
how many we can actually count. I sent that. I just can't find it. Okay, I don't think I've seen that. Because it's part. It's your tuition receivables that I bill. Right. That's where that list comes from. You do. I I remember I mean, seeing it. So is, are you talking? Yeah, this is tuition receivable students grade and residency list. So this no, is what. No, it's not that one. That was after your response that what I sent you isn't what you wanted because you wanted to know what the actual grade counts were for your projections. Right. No, and that's that's what you sent. So. I, so that's what that is. List but I had of sent. Per right. I had sent. My note says I sent it on 116 and 117. Need to give tuition revenue. Okay. That's, that's what I can't find. And I can't access that spreadsheet because I can't get into the mm -hmm. SU network from here. I'm running off of thumb drive for your budget stuff. So I can resend it tomorrow. Okay. But my computer's dying, so I'm shutting it down. So I'm a little confused. So this says it's tuition students receivable student grade and residence. Right. I so took out all of the other. That's just for your question when you asked me to give you a, the actual grade, grade levels. levels. So, so that but was this includes that. students that we don't. There could be kids on there get that receivables for. they are going to RTCC. And you don't get any kids from Randolph. We have one that's a questionable residency. Right. The other two are swaps. Yep. I got those. It wasn't. This one right here. This was sent on 117. No, that, that has the old revenue stuff. Yeah. Okay. I can resend it tomorrow. Okay. okay. Thank you. But we were over projected. We are, we are have more than what you budgeted. That's why we added yeah. five. Nice. this year's revenue. Any um, other revenue? Okay. Well, I mean, the other part of it is that we're increasing our tuition rate, so just like you should, did you count increasing the tuition rate for our current, like, so if you keep the same number, you'd have an increased amount of revenue. I think so. I don't know. Because <laughs> I think I did that before we said it. I don't know. I don't think okay. My brain doesn't work after 9 o'clock either. Yeah. <laughs> it gets late. Yep. So... Double check. That makes me think that once we're done with the revenue piece, we need to figure out when to meet again. And I feel like always there's a date. I should, probably shouldn't say this on camera. That the town clerks say we have to have everything in by, but then there's the date that they give you on the down low for when they really have to be in by. I have got by. no down low date from either of your town clerks. Uh, so January 24th is your date also? So that is what they've given me. In your absolute drop dead, you have to have your warning posted by the 31st. Of January. Yeah. Would it be more, has anyone ever looked into doing like what Randolph does and publishing it in the Herald and seeing how much it would be to publish on like a newspaper? Just yeah, I don't know. It would be cheaper. Hmm. Not that I'm opposed to supply on <laughs> But. And basically we'd be able to get another week if we printed ourselves, but. You know. No, because statutorily, your requirement is only right. 10 days prior to the meeting, you have to release the information to the public. Oh, but I mean, like, we'd have to have the warning. So but your have to warning have the has set. to be done, right. right. But the actual right. mailers to your town people, you as a school board have to pick up that expense. That's what your benefit is by going with the town, mm -hmm. is you get included in the town book, and it's all in one nice, neat little packet for all the voters. But there's several districts that go after town meeting, that have to generate their own books. Okay. Is it possible for someone from the SU office to make a phone call and see if the 24th is seriously the last day? You're looking to me? Yes, please, <laughs> actually. Well, right, it seems like uh, we're going to All right. Yeah, if it's I'll not the that. 24th, I'm sure it'll be the 27th, which doesn't leave, you know, well, it just has the weekend separating to. I feel like there have been years when it's like February 1st. Oh. Mm -hmm. Which is late. I mean, I know one of my other districts just let their town person know how many pages they needed reserved in the book. Okay. And their town was okay with that, but I don't know what your town clerks. Mm -hmm. So could that be an additional question if we can tell them how many pages we need if that's 
close enough. Do we know how many pages we need? Well, you got 17 here, and then we got roughly 10 for the SU, and then you got your board letter, your SU, the superintendent's letter, your That's building we... administrator's letter. 17 pages? Tara knows put... is what we're trying to say. We're 30? not going to put 17 pages into a town report. That's this is your budget. Past. Thirty. That's what we normally do. do and we your have tax we have pages, pages and pages. So yes. Talking thirty. Yep. And if we. With yep. Well, the last year it was not. They didn't want photos. I don't. Okay. Talking thirty. Right. right so about thirty well, I don't pages. Know. Have, yeah. have the Have you all written your principal's letter for the town report? In my head, several times. So you, I, however long Wait. those are, have you written your board letter? Right. We're, We're working, working on, on it. it. So however long that is. Though. So you have to total that all up. And I, don't don't it. I think we've done a one pager classically. I mean, I don't think we go. I mean, when we do an overview. <laughs> so when do we meet again? I mean, I think that's but the right. I think that's what we got to figure out is is when yeah. can we expect to get the revisions we've asked for? And you all then. wrote notes for the revisions that you discussed earlier that I don't know about. Yeah. We didn't. Yeah. Okay. Uh -oh. Oh, the, oh, the tier one. Because well, tier one was already taken and into account we got in your handout. You came in. What's it really? We have a number of mm -hmm. questions and concerns on a document. Oh, so tier one was kind of. Yeah. Yeah. It was already but we it. made some changes in tier one <laughs> by about a hundred thousand or more. But tier dollars. one being just those four, because this stuff was already part of budget two. That's what you and I did on the phone before the last meeting. Right. <laughs> so those cuts were already accounted okay. for in draft two. Yep. So, this ones? so that puts us at a different the, place. Wait, are we including the, the, the two that elementary one? teachers were already pulled from draft from two. That's from tonight. That was in draft okay. three. That's on your tax sheet on draft three. That was the discussion we had where it was adding the expenditures rather than reducing them. So I verbally gave you what the new per pupil spending was. It was based on those cuts and then adding back in the 27000 for the outdoor ed that you don't want to take out. Okay. Well, so that um, puts us in a different place then, I think. Yeah, right? Totally agree. So, I mean, unless there's others that you talked about that aren't truly in here, well, then, I mean, other than this list that we went over tonight, the 1400s and 320s and 250s. And we still don't know what a percent is. Like in terms it's not of the dollar amount. It's not calculated out on my tax sheet, so I got to do that. Okay. So I, I guess. Mean, on the tax sheet, if you, you can, like with the copy that we've been sent, you can sort of hijack the page and just type in like the, the bottom line number instead of doing the sums from the previous pages. And well, that's what that, we did on the tax sheet. Yeah. And that's so, why there's that cut page. Yeah. So that if you want to make cuts, we just put it on the cuts page, and then it only goes to the tax sheet. And then when you finally decide what you want to do, then we update the expenditure report, which then updates the pivot table. When do you want to meet? We were starting to discuss that. So should we try for a special meeting Thursday at 4? I mean, I have the policy meeting later. I'm not but... going to get this done tomorrow. I okay. have the auditors in my office all day tomorrow. Okay. So I think that's like what the intent on is when the and business committee was here or not. Not and on Friday I met business managers one on one. So it's gotta be Thursday. Do you have any time between the auditors leaving and the day of Thursday to do this? Or not? Should we do something and push it out a little farther? We have a full board meeting Monday night. I have Stratford Tuesday night that I now need to run another budget for. Oh yeah. I think we should <clears throat> perhaps have that meeting on Thursday afternoon just to see what we can do. Well, if but we're not going to have know. new information, then it doesn't. Yeah, I mean, the only information that we could have there is if the administrators could come up with anything that answers to those line codes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and I almost feel like that could be done electronically. Yeah. Yeah. Have you guys had any discussions with the staff about, you know, places that they can save money or anything. You know, I know that they came to one of the previous meetings and you know, said they wanted well, they're to. they're here right now. Right. But and we're being taped. Right. But 
you know, it seems like if it's more of a collaborative process, it might be better than just having staff cuts that come down without kind of consulting them on other places that could be have savings or something like that. Just a thought. Yeah, I think it would be um, difficult to have staff making suggestions about reductions of other staff. Oh, no, I, totally agree agree. That. Mm -hmm. well, I agree about that. I agree about that. But you know, if they had creative like, ideas about ways that they could save money that would prevent us from having to cut staff, I think you know that'd be worth asking about since mm -hmm. they're the ones who are kind of at the level where money is getting spent to some extent. Anyway, that doesn't answer the question of what our next meeting is. So. No, I'm not tying all that. Um, yeah, I'm willing to meet as soon as we have new information, but um, if we can't have a new report by Thursday then, and if we can't move the town deadline, I mean, I think we're in sort of crisis mode <coughs> trying to figure out how we prepare a budget and how we get it warned in the appropriate timeline and communicated out to people. What is your third um, so, I, I don't really know when our next meeting should be. This well, do we, mm -hmm. preach, whatever. Do we end up biting the bullet and saying that oh, we're going to publish our own report this report. year, but that we need to get the, I mean, does the warning have to go out in the town report? Yeah. Uh, they're, they're so it doesn't, the warning doesn't have to go out okay. in the town report, it just uh, has to be warned. Nine, 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 so I'm working on something. Okay, right okay. Now. great. I can move everything. Oh, wait, I can't do Thursday. We can also. I can't do Thursday at yeah. Okay. So if the rest of you could, that. then you have a quorum. We could have new information for Friday, though. We could do a Friday meeting. I know it's really exciting. I won't be here. Three o'clock? Unless you're doing it. I mean, I'm at Business Managers 101 in Berlin from 9 to 3 is class. So if we did a 4 p.m.? Well, I mean, if we have the I'm new sorry. information, we could even start at 3. We could start at 3, and then if we have questions for Tara, you could have an exciting commute on speakerphone with all of us. <laughs> Can you look up? <laughs> she drives too fast anyway. So, distracted and... Sorry. Thursday. My prior life is cringing when you make statements like that. <laughs> I'm so okay, all right. So, we're going to... The principals are going to meet on with Tara on... Thursday at some point, right? The principals and you. Okay. okay. That's very nice. To um, be and then, so how does four o'clock Friday work for people? Misery loves company. Right? Three o'clock. Or three o'clock on Friday. We're on the campus. We're already there. It's in service. Mm, half I'm day. I can do three o'clock yeah. on Friday. I don't think I can do before three thirty on Friday. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, you? you could start yes. without me. That's for sure. About the rest of the board, can you guys yeah. three like, o'clock Friday? Start at three. Starting at three. We can do. We can do three o'clock on we'll Friday, but the shells at ski runners. We're talking about for the meeting with us. And and so my job is usually to pick up Winnie from daycare, which we're Thursday. We should pick her up around four. Okay. Yeah. That's on Prairie Road. Can you all come to the SU Thursday? Okay. 10 a.m.? At 10. I don't know what's the latest we can pick up. Okay. Five's the drop down. It's much easier for me if I can actually be in the network. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they still have a quorum. If, Rodney, can you do 3 o'clock Friday? How about we start on South Royal at 9.30? Probably. Okay. Hmm? Okay. I'm suggesting that we get a... Lisa. Lisa. I can do 3. Okay. I mean, we could also say 3.30 if that's... Yeah, that's pretty difficult, but... I think I think we have more. It's going to be a little bit of a princess Friday. Is my fortieth birthday. Okay. Trevor <laughs> so right. really had to record me. <laughs> Shall we sing? <laughs> With cake. I mean, I have to. I mean, it would have to. Only, I couldn't stay late. I mean, everyone else needs to stay late, and I. Right, and anticipate having dinner day. at least with my husband. So if if you could be there at three, and then I'll be there by three thirty, three thirty, and then we'll, we'll still have team. a quorum. We'll tag team in and out. Okay.
I'm sorry. It's okay. All right. And Andrew, can you be there at 3? I think so. 3 a.m. I'm okay. there. Not me. You don't want to see that. Um, Who's going to be there? Who isn't? So to start the meeting, it will be Rodney, Lisa, Jessica, and Andrew. What time are you starting? How many we need? Three. Four. 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 We need four people. And then I will be there in time to relieve Jessica as quickly as I possibly can because it's her 40th birthday. And oh, happy birthday. Yeah. This should yeah. be a fairly quick meeting. I would I, I would hope so. If we if you guys when are the when's the admin team meeting? We're meeting Thursday. I blocked that my entire day out for them. For this admin team. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, so if we could get the electronic report um, as soon as possible, that would be after that meeting so we can digest the information, et cetera. That would be lovely. Thank you so much. Um, so and, and the budget you're you're expecting us to bring to you has a zero percent tax increase. Just to be yes. our, well, our instructions for Thursday. <laughs> Minus one. Well, no. I mean, but, but yes. let's clarify. Is that prior to the CLA or after the CLA? Pre-CLA. That has an impact. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Pre-CLA. Pre-CLA. Pre -CLA. And equalized people. I mean, the thing is, if we hold the equalized tax rate flat. Then Royalton has a two percent tax increase. Bethel stays similar, plus or minus the CLA. Okay. So, I don't know. I think it. Find out what it takes to do that, and then we'll decide if we're willing to do that. <laughs> find out what it takes to do zero tax increase. Mm -hmm. After the CLA. Before. Before, before the, the CLA. CLA. But before the but after the PDQ or the excitement. <laughs> okay, you lost me. LOL. Right. 9.30 um, yeah. <laughs> at night. Right. Yes. This is my second meeting. So we're adjourning at 9.34, and our next meeting is Friday at 3 p.m. Royalton Campus.